Tonight's program features a change in director. Steve Ballour called on to replace Danny White temporarily, according to rumors. White has been an award winner over the years, but his health is limited to rehearsal time, and rave reviews have come less frequently. Ballour has spent most of his career backstage doing little more than holding a clipboard, but his flashes of potential have not gone unnoticed. One change is permanent. John Dutton, whose role has been reduced to walk-on, has been replaced by understudy Kevin Brooks. But what about the star? Tony Dorsett has had the lead for 11 years, and as good as he's been, the critics say Herschel Walker has star quality and will only get better with a bigger part and a script written just for him. Don Shula is working in his third decade of building winners. First in the 60s with a strong arm of Johnny Unitas and a rugged ground game of the Baltimore Colts. In 1970, he went to Miami and with a bruising ground game, won three straight conference titles, two Super Bowls, and racked up the only perfect season in NFL history. In the 80s, he's been in two more Super Bowls and hopes to ride the arm of Dan Marino to even more title chances. In only his fifth year, Marino is already the number one rated quarterback of all time in pro football. And at this rate, by the time he's 30, he'll own every passing record in the book. Tonight, the NFL's top gun is in Dallas, and he and the Dolphins take aim at the Cowboys. It's the Miami Dolphins at four and five against the Dallas Cowboys at five and four. Both clubs need a win to keep the playoffs in sight. For Miami, it's simple. They win, they're tied for first in the AFC East. If they lose, they're in dead last. With a win, the Cowboys can get within a game and a half of the division-leading Redskins who play tomorrow night. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and it's great to have you with us for the Cowboys and the Dolphins on ESPN, two of the dominant franchises in the history of pro football. It's a pleasure to be working with Roy Firestone again, and Roy, while they did dominate in the past, no more. Michael, I think in, in honor of the college gameplay this weekend, we might bill this one as the resistible force and the movable object. You know, if the NFL wanted uh, parity, I think they've gotten it. It seems like every team is mediocre. The Dolphins and Cowboys kind of reflect it. Dolphins only 13 and 13 since 1985. The Cowboys just 3 in 10 in their last 13 regular regular season games. Of course, there's no defending the Dolphins' defense. They can't stop the run. They can't stop the pass. They have problems running the football, as you see. They're making mental mistakes, too. Eight penalties, five turnovers, five drop balls last week, much to Shula's chagrin. Dan Marino continues to be the beacon of light in the darkness, though, for the Dolphins. You know, he's thrown 50 more touchdown passes than anyone in his era. And Mark Duper is back tonight. That's good news for the Dolphins, a team that has to win in a suddenly very cramped division. The AFC East, or shall we say of late, the AFC Least. Parody is supposed to be a wonderful thing. <laughs> right, yeah. Our guest analyst tonight is a Hall of Fame quarterback who started at the Naval Academy. Roger Staubach threw for 3,500 yards and 18 touchdowns in his three-year career and scored 17 more touchdowns as a runner on his way to the Heisman Trophy in 1963. After serving his active duty commitment in the Navy, he went to Dallas and led the Cowboys to the top of the National Football League as the master of the come-from-behind win. And his brilliant career was capped by his enshrinement in the Hall of Fame. It's a pleasure for us to welcome Roger Staubach to ESPN. And Roger, what kind of team do the Dallas Cowboys have right now? Well, I think, Mike, the uh, Cowboys pretty much represent the league. Uh, the inconsistencies are there, and Dallas is at the top of the heap. One week they look good, the next week you're, uh, you're not so sure. So they need to get back on track, uh, mainly offensively. Defense have been pretty darn solid, especially teams that play well. But offensively, they just have not put it together week to week. Throughout his career in Dallas, Tom Landry has been a very consistent person. Where does the team get the consistency back? Well, I think it really comes uh, on offense. Uh, last week, he took that step. Give the ball to Herschel 30 times a game, and you, you get your running game back in shape again. Uh, in the passing game, Danny White has been an excellent quarterback when he's healthy, but he's been hurt. His wrist is bothering him, so they're going to put Steve Fuller in there. They need a good game from Steve. No mistakes. Let Herschel carry the ball. And also their attitude. Their attitude is coming back. Uh, they, they all jumped on each other when they beat New England in that overtime. So attitude and Herschel Walker will get them back on track, I think. 
Miami will kick off to start this game. Fouad Reves has to teed up at the 35 deep to receive. Daryl Clark, number 42. Kelvin Martin, number 83. A sellout crowd here at Texas Stadium and an important ball game for both clubs. They still have playoff hopes, but a loss tonight might damage those severely for either team. High, short kick. And Martin takes it at the 16-yard line. Got to see. Reves, the man to beat him, Reves, knocks him out of bounds after a 38-yard kickoff return. And special teams is a place you can get an edge, Roger. Well, that's for sure. That's a short kick also at uh, about down to the 20-yard line. And a young quarterback uh, standing on the sidelines, you'd love to see a start like this because you're in good field position and it's a good start for Pelour. Steve Pelour is the Dallas quarterback. Three and six as a starter last year when Danny White is injured. He has only taken one snap from center this year and was knocked out of the ball game on it. Play fake to Walker and Pelour, who's got great speed, will run it and gets down to the 40-yard line. Pinned there by T.J. Turner. He gains seven yards on that play. The Cowboys' future will rest on the shoulders of Herschel Walker. He had 173 yards last week. The line is young. Tom Rafferty, the only man with more than two years as a starter. They have not opened many holes for the running backs towards that or Walker. Throw in motion on second and three. Walker, first carry. Jackie Ship, the first man to get to him in that Miami defense. And the Dolphins' defense has not been able to put much heat on the quarterback this year. John Boza drafted to help the pass rush. He does not have a sack. The linebackers are better since Offerdahl has come back from a severe arm injury. The secondary, it lacks speed, and the best cover man, William Judson, was hit with four, count them, four interference penalties last week. The Dolphin defense, you can expect to give up the big yardage rushing. In fact, nine of their last 11, 140 or more rushing yards. Particularly last week, 170 against Dickerson. Third and less than a yard. Walker. First down and more. Broke a tackle. Look at the balance. Inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. First down, Cowboy. This guy ran a 9-9 in the ninth grade, Roger. He gives them tremendous dimension, catching and running the football. Well, you can't tackle a Herschel with your arms. That's been obvious. And Langford comes, tries to get his arms around him here and just doesn't do it. He'll get five or six yards. And last week, he broke that final touchdown through two tackles. And that's why he's in there. They feel the offensive line is young, and they want Herschel to break some plays. Uh, Dorsett is, is good, solid runner, but Walker can break the big tackle. First and 10 at the 28. Timmy Newsom busted straight up the middle. Newsom still on his feet to the 15 yard line. Ball came loose. Let's see if it's after the whistle or not. And apparently it is down at the 15 yard line. Newsom does not get that many carries, only nine this year, but they saw something on that one. Yeah, he's a plotting runner who won the job from Ron Springs, but uh, when he does get the ball, Roger seems to run well with it. Well, that's right, and they're keying on Herschel Walker, and it's nice to have uh, Timmy Newsom in there, who's uh, really a blocker, but with a runner like Herschel, they're going to be keen on on Herschel, and Timmy will sneak in there now and then. That, that was a uh, about a 15-yarder on, on a, a key off of Walker. Miami embarrassed a week ago by the Colts offense, and they said, what do you think's going to happen with Herschel Walker? He's better than Dickerson. They got him that time. Jackie Ship in on another tackle along with John Offered, all number 56. And Jackie Ship is no longer the target of all the critics. Former number one draft choice out of Oklahoma. He is starting to realize his potential. Improved a great deal, obviously, in the doghouse uh, for the last couple of years for the Dolphins, playing much more aggressively, getting to the outside, making the plays as he, he did that time. He should be happy over Oklahoma's victory against Nebraska yesterday. Going to the Orange Bowl as soon as are. Second and seven. Okay. Four, nine, with a play action, wants to throw. Dumps it off. Newhouse. Touchdown, Timmy Newsom. Well, 
if you, you put all your eggs in one basket and try to cover Walker, it leaves it open for Timmy Newsom. Well, it's a you know good uh, play action fake there to Walker. Newsom's coming back underneath and is wide open. But for Pelor, they start out with a play action pass at the beginning of the game. Well, let him hit the short pass. Use your instincts to run the ball. And now he hits the touchdown pass here at the end of the drive with the play action. What a confidence builder for a young quarterback like Pelor, who lost some confidence towards the end of the year last year, and they were losing a big drive for Steve Pelor. Roger Rozak, who has been a great find for the Dallas Cowboys, comes on for the point after. Jump on top in a hurry. 11 minutes, 13 seconds to go, first quarter. 7-0 Dallas. And Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. By the Uniroyal Goodrich Tire Company, makers of premium radial tires for cars and trucks. And by Allstate, for home, auto, and life insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. 7-0 Dallas, Timmy Newsom on the sideline. A chance to be a star as it looked like the Miami defense concentrating on Herschel Walker. Newsom in that drive had a 17-yard run and caught the touchdown pass. And Roger Ruzek will kick it away for the Cowboys. Deep to receive Lorenzo Hampton and number 81, Scott Schwedes. And it's Hampton at the two. 20. And no more than the 23-yard line as the Cowboys do a good job of covering. Everson Walls down on the coverage. A 22-yard kickoff return. Dan Marino continues to amaze everyone in his fifth year. The league's top-rated passer. 17 touchdown passes, only five interceptions. He'll have one of his primary weapons back in the lineup tonight. Mark Duper was out with a torn cartilage in his ribs. The line, anchored by perennial pro bowler Dwight Stevenson, excels at pass blocking. They have given up only nine sacks all year and what else Marino wants to go to Hampton on the first play won't pick up much good coverage there by the Dallas linebackers Mike Hegman in his 12th year out of Tennessee State and here's the Cowboy defense the front four much better with frequent substitution so the veterans don't wear out too tall Jones is wearing out the opposition himself he has nine sacks number two in the league Gene Lockhart enjoying his best season as the Cowboys middle linebacker. He had 15 tackles a week ago. And Everson Walls heads up a pretty good secondary. He has 38 career interceptions. Second down, eight yards to go for Miami. Hampton. And too tall waiting for him. Because he got maybe a yard across the line of scrimmage. He's 36 years old, and too tall, Jones. He dropped about 15 pounds. Is that the difference, Roger, for his great play this year? Well, he's worked extremely hard in the offseason. He really came to camp. He had an excellent training camp. He stayed in good shape, and he's he's uh, it's really paid off for him. He's played well in uh, the entire season, mainly from his offseason uh, efforts. Second in sacks in the NFL, by the way. Behind only Reggie White. And a few months ago, they had written too tall off. Didn't like that. Third and six. Marino guns near side, Clayton complete, shakes the tackle, 40-45, pushed out of bounds to 46-yard line, pushed out by Vince Albritton after a 21-yard game. Now, we are going to see tonight, Mike and Roger, the Cowboys dropping seven men back to defend Dan Marino. What's he going to try to split the scene? Well, he's going to have to be patient, hit the short one, especially in first or second down. This time, Dan... At, he knows where man-to-man -man is. Pruitt went into the inside. They took the safety, and also uh, he was double-teamed. And on the outside, Clayton got man-to-man -man on walls. So Marino ha has to look over that secondary and find the guy's man-to-man, -man, throw it to him. That's not as easy as it looked, but he knew who was man-to-man, -man, threw it to him. First and 10 from the 47. Marino switches receivers and bombs away for Clayton incomplete. Covered back there man-to-man -man by Ron Francis, the rookie out of Baylor. And even though he's been burned a few times this year, this kid's going to be a great player. Came up with a big interception for a touchdown against uh, the New England Patriots last week. Obviously, Roger, Mark Duper's presence in there makes a big difference for the, for the Dolphins' offense. They can't double and triple Clayton like they did last week. No, it, it does make a difference. And I think tonight you'll see a high percentage uh, of completions on first and second down to the, the Stratfords, the Hamptons, the Hardys, the Johnsons, the tight ends, and the backs. Dallas, especially with a 7-0 lead, they don't want 
want the home run. They don't want a Clayton or Duper to hit the big one. So Marino's going to have to earn it. He's going to have to be patient, hit underneath the uh, the deep coverage. Keep an eye on 82 to the top of your screen as James Pruitt in for the first time. This is Troy Stratford, the young man out of Boston College. He'll get to midfield where Bill Bates takes him down, the strong side safety, and the number three tackler on the team. Roger, this is one of the few defenses that has seemed to have much success with Marino, the seven defensive men. Well, it, it has. Uh, it really goes back to that Super Bowl game when San Francisco played him so well. Mm -hmm. But again, he's he's uh, done. He understands it now. I talked to him yesterday, and he said you just have to be patient. You have to take the short ones, and and the the uh, the, the big ones will uh, come later. But you just have to be patient and hit the underneath and uh, make the coverage move up so you can hit the deep ones later on in the game. Need seven yards on this. Good pass protection. Throws complete. What a catch by Clayton. He had Everson Walls turned around, and he's down to the 20-yard line. First down, Miami. Boy, this guy just throws darts. Well, here, here's the thing that Marino does that he's, you know, he's a, kind of a Bradshaw type. Bradshaw used to throw the ball with his arm, and he had total confidence in his receivers, as does Marino. He saw Walls was there going to the inside. He still drilled that ball. Clayton adjusted to it, made a great catch. Walls lost the ball. He was looking inside. The ball came outside, and Clayton adjusted, made a great play. But Marino had confidence in Clayton, and that made the difference in the play. Miami late getting Tony Nathan on the field. 30-second clock is down to eight. Stratford got a good block and found the hole. Stratford, touchdown Miami! This is not going to be a defensive confrontation. This guy, Troy Stratford, Roger, Bobby Bethard of the Redskins told me when they missed him in the draft, they were sick to death. Look at the way he turns on a dime, and he's got pretty good speed to the outside. Oh, yeah, and it's good block at the point of attack there. Giesler got a nice block and Foster, but, you know, Marino really sets up the run with the pass. He's the opposite of the rest of them. Dallas is worried about that pass, and, of course, they were a little bit uh, uh, negligent on, on letting Stratford get to the outside. Reves is on for the point after out of the hole with Don Strzok. He's perfect on it. And we've got some fireworks early in Dallas. 7.52 to go first quarter. It's the Cowboys 7 and the Dolphins 7. Stratford, scouts have told me we think he is a more dangerous back than Joe Morris and a more elusive back than Mercury Morris. He got a big block from Tony Nathan to spring the touchdown. We'll see that block in just a few moments, too. A real good block for a guy who's uh, kind of a, enjoying a second life, Tony Nathan. That's right. Unusual situation. He was simply released this year and then came back. The role player now. Reve is kicking off the clock 42 and Martin 83, and it's clock at the four. This time, they won't let him outside. Gets to the 25-yard line, and they'll start from there. All right, let's take a look at the block then. Nathan leading the way. Geisler getting a good block in there, too. Well, you, you, you got Geisler, the left tackle, who pulls. His, his job is to seal to the inside, and it can't be drawn up any better. Nathan's got the kick-out block on Bates, knocks him out of the way. And also, Pruitt's doing his job downfield as a wide receiver. And wide receivers really uh, can make a difference in long runs, and he did his job. So it, was, uh, it, it worked just the way they draw him up. Now you played with a few that were good at blocking downfield and a few that really weren't. Those right. lookout it's, blocks. It's a big difference having those receivers blocking downfield. First and 10 from the 25. Edwards and Redden throw to the near side. They go with three wide receivers. Anderson with one of them. Give it to Walker. Just barrels into the line this time. And look at all those shirts. The green shirts of the Miami defense. All over them that time. Brzezinski led the charge. And that Dolphin scoring drive went 77 yards in only seven plays. But that is the way Marino can get it done in a hurry. And the Dolphins are 2-0 this year when they're behind at the start of the ballgame. Steve Fuller. Young man really has a lot of speed. Tremendous mobility. Not as mobile as Roger Staubach. A little faster. The Lord will pull it down and show you, and he slides in safe at the 35. One of the
of the, one of the raps against Pelour, I think, was the fact that he headed upfield a lot sooner than he should. In other words, the tendency to scramble before looking for the whole field. Roger, you, you had to deal with that problem when you first started, too. Well, that's right. It's, uh, he's got the instincts, though, to be able to run, so he just tucks it away when he's unsure of himself. But he's got the ability to run, so he... He, he takes advantage of it. Last year, he was doing that. I think the coaches said, hey, Steve, stay in that pocket a little bit longer. And he, and he took some of those instincts away, and he started to start second-guessing, and he uh, made some mistakes. I think this year, they're saying, get in there and just do what you can to make things happen. Two tight ends on third and a yard. Walker on the sweep. They're stringing it out. They still can't get it. Langford knocks him out of bounds. Looked like a very slow, developing play, and there's no way he's going to be able to turn the corner, but he did. Herschel Walker runs better, it appears to me, with poorer blocking than Tony Dorsett does. Maybe because of his power. you agree with that, Rush? Well, Tony is a uh, is smaller, and he's, a, he's really fast. He needs a little bit of daylight. Herschel can run without some daylight because he can shed some, uh, some tackles. So they're different type runners, both great runners, but different styles. Herschel bowls ahead where Tony is, is more of a streak uh, quickness. Pelour almost picked off by ship intended for Cosby. Jackie Ship having quite a year this season, and the linebackers really the Dolphins' strong suit on defense. Obviously, the uh, the problem is that uh, I don't think he he was looking upfield when the ball came around. At the last minute, he'll turn around and the ball just yeah. You see, it kind of surprised him. Look like. Yeah, Cosby's job was to turn out, and there was there was help on the inside also, and uh, Ship did his job. Blackwood was coming from the inside. Bloor uh, just shouldn't have thrown that football. Second and ten, Edwards and Renfro to the near side. Walker on a delay, and around the ankle, John Boza, the rookie out of Boston College. Really, uh, it's a, I think it's a bad rap on Boza to say he hasn't produced. He's only practiced maybe 15, 16 times the entire season. He was a holdout in camp and really just hasn't had a lot of work. He's going to be a fine player. Bob Wolf, of course, uh, held him out of camp, and it was getting kind of bitter between uh, Wolf and uh, Robbie folks. And he missed all of training camp, then the strike. So he really, as you said before, hasn't played very much. He says, I know I can play better. I will show it. Third down eight for Dallas. Miami desperate for a pass rush and can't get one. He's four on the run. First down and more. And he slides in safe to 43 yard run. 17 yard gain for Steve Pelour. Remember late last year when Tom Landry had made the comment that Pelour could be another Rogers Staubach. A lot of people figure that really hurt him. And in fact, he went into a tailspin. Does he remind you of you, Roger? Well, early in uh, my career, of course, I ran a lot more uh, than I should, according to what the coaches said. So Steve <laughs> is doing that. He's he, that time there was a four-man rush, and also Fry came 53. So he he just saw the opening there and said, "I'm going to get the first down the way I want to get the first down." And he was sure of it. But he's got the speed to do it. The Lord 29 yards on three carries. Now he wants to throw. Three-man rush, and he airs it out, looking for Walker. Beautifully covered flag is down. That may be offensive interference because Glenn Blackwood had perfect position. I would say that that would, would not be defensive interference. Uh, it almost looked like uh, there was an interference, but Walker did hit Blackwood, and Blackwood had a chance to intercept, so that's why the referee probably called it because there was definitely a chance to probably intercept the football. Blackwood couldn't have played it any better, and the Miami secondary has really been blasted, but Blackwood's had a good year. Yeah, Blackwood had that inside position there, and of course, uh, and he had a chance to uh, intercept the ball. Walker had to push. He has a right to the ball, but he can't push that defender who had a chance to intercept it also, and it, it was a good call. Uh, the fans don't like it, but the uh, referees made the right call. Of course, Blackwood did his best job of slowing down, too. And he's entitled yeah, he to do had, that. He had good position, though. Blackwood did a good job on that. First and 20 after the penalty back at the Dallas 46. Walker. Nice play by Offerdahl. Had a great year as a rookie. Had that serious arm injury. He has come back and picked up right where he left off. Yeah, nine tackles after missing 10 weeks. He is the second coming of Jack Lambert. This young man is 
starting the Pro Bowl in his rookie year at linebacker. Maybe the best thing you can say about a, a very, very below average Dolphin defense. That's made a good comparison there with Lambert. Lambert was a great leader in that Pittsburgh team, and Offer Dahl's also a tremendous leader. They, they really like his leadership, plus he's all over the field. There's something about that number 56, too. Yeah. It seems to go around the league. Boy, if you're wearing 56, you're an animal. Second, 17. Here comes the blitz. And Pelour threw it into a pile. Offer Dahl if he had been looking, could have picked it off. Herschel Walker was sitting on the ground. Now that shows inexperience, does it not, Ron? Well, Steve had, you have one choice on the, uh, the screen. If he's not open, you got to get rid of the ball. Well, he hesitated there. Now, of course, you can't pretty much, you can't throw the ball downfield because you got people downfield. So that was just a poor play. Should, once it wasn't there, he should have thrown it away. But he tried to salvage a play. And as a young quarterback, that's, uh, that's your tendency to try to salvage plays. Have to do more than salvage on this, the third and 17. We're tied at 7, 3.46 to go first quarter. Four-man rush. Plenty of time. He'll run again. Bowles have missed it. 40, 35, 30. First down. Finally taken down by Glenn Blackwood after a run of 21. And Steve Pallor has gained 50 yards rushing in the first quarter. I'll tell you, Steve is really putting on the show, and he's... Uh, this, this is a killer for a defense, too. I don't care what they say. Uh, defensive people, some of we like to see that quarterback run, but they don't. They, that just takes away their their uh, their rushing ability. They start worrying about where he's going to run. They have to slow down their rush. Of course, he's got the speed and the quickness, and uh, that that's just a, that's a big play against the defense, and it'll slow down the rush the rest of the game. First and 10 after another ramble by Pulor. They'll go out of the eye. Walker. A flag is down as Walker reaches the 20, but he showed you his strength there. Arm tackles will not do it, but the preliminary signal is a hold against the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys in the last four weeks have 45 penalties called against them. The uh, rookie right tackle who has been in there because Phil Posderick quit the squad. And Posderick, of course, was a real target here when he would be called for holding. The fans really got on him. Roger, you'll see it on the right side of the screen. Kevin Gogan with the hold. Yeah, on a running running play, uh, especially with Walker, it's uh, it looks, looks like there was a double hold in there. Someone yeah, holding each got. other's shirt. That, uh -huh. Those are tough ones to call in those quick hitting running plays. First through 20 now for Dallas from the 40. Walker. You're going to hear that said an awful lot. Just Walker. Turner and Brzezinski make the tackle. Hey, you see Danny White. Is there a quarterback controversy in your mind right now, Roger? No, they, they've, uh, they both get along very well. Uh, Pelour understands White's situation. He's been really a courageous player this year. White's been hurt the whole season. He's, he's had some difficult plays. He's had a couple, couple interceptions that hurt. But he's also come back with plays like he did last week with Torrenfro. So White's hung in there, but they need a healthy uh, quarterback, and they need some consistency at quarterback. And maybe with the rest, White could come back and kind of relieve with his experience later on in a game or later on in the season. This is the 11th play of a six-minute drive for Dallas. Good play. Good play. Pelour hesitated. Now he'll take off. Got a few. Brzezinski chased him out of bounds. Kind of like a bootleg play. I don't know if this was by design or a broken play, but it sure fooled everybody, including the Cowboy. He went the other way. Five carries, 57 yards in the first quarter mm -hmm. for, for Pelour. Yeah, he could get 200 yards tonight. When was the last time you got 200 <laughs> yards? Was, you last time, was the quarterback ever got 200 yards rushing the football? Do you remember the best you ever had in the game? Uh, no, I don't. It's probably hovering around that 100 mark. That was you know, what happens, the linebackers, too, don't get as deep. They're going to have to start worrying about him, so he'll start having some intermediate routes open uh, later on. So he's setting some nice things up. Third and eight. Here comes the blitz. Cowboys pick it up beautifully, and the pass intended for Edwards. Picked off in the end zone. Taken by Bud Brown. 
And somebody got hung up on running a route that time, and it looked like it was number 81, Kelvin Edwards. This could be a missed assignment, Rod. Yeah, well, Bud Brown made a heck of a catch right there. Pal Pallor saw uh, Edwards supposed to go to the corner, but he got hung up, ran into uh, the uh, Smith, and then, of course, he overthrew the pass, but Brown made a heck of an interception. We've got a timeout with a minute 25 to go. First quarter still tied at seven. Interception, Miami takes over at its own 20. Hampton on the toss. Not much. The Cowboys stop him for a three-yard gain, and that Dallas defense has been allowing only 3.2 yards a rush and two and a half yards a rush in the last three ball games. He's done a fine job. Hope you'll be with us on Thanksgiving night. Texas A&M in Texas for the Southwest Conference title and the right to meet Notre Dame in the Cotton Bowl. It's A&M and the Longhorns. They really get after each other. So uh, get out the mints or pumpkin pie and join us on Thursday night. Clock ticking down in the first quarter, second, and call it six for the Dolphins. And Marino trying to give it to Hampton, and Hampton was setting up the block, and Dan had to eat it. It's a lonely feeling, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Marino is talking to... He's talking to somebody there. <laughs> yeah, he is. They're not going to win on his legs. They're going to win on his arm. Well, that there was Hampton. a communication breakdown with Hampton there. You take it, I don't want it. Third and eight now. And mistakes are the things that drive Don Shula nuts. This team is always the least penalized club in the league, and they don't make mental mistakes. Five-man rush, good job by the line, and Marino gets it off. He's got it to Stratford, and a first down at the 32. Stratford gives them so much versatility. Robert Williams made the tackle, and that's the end of the first quarter. Here at Texas Stadium in Dallas, we are tied. The Dolphins and the Cowboys at seven. Make Sunday a day you join us for ESPN's coverage of everything that's going on in pro football. Game day at 11.30 in the morning, NFL primetime, the best highlight show you will ever see at 7 o'clock Eastern and followed by our game next Sunday night. The Browns and the 49ers, the great Jim Brown will be our guest analyst. Browns and the 49ers both won today and the Browns extremely impressive. They've won seven of their last nine. They may be the best team in the AFC. That ought to be a lot of fun and this is a lot of fun right here. First and 10, Miami at its own 32. Marino changing the play. Got four wide receivers in there. Protection again on the road. Tipped an incomplete. Hardy had a chance to get it. But Gene Lockhart got his hands on it. Well, it Lockhart's having a great year, isn't he? Yeah, the hitting machine. Yeah, Lockhart's doing real well. Of course, passing on first down is uh, it's a good strategy against Dallas. But those linebackers with a guy like Marina, they're really getting back there deep. They're not, uh, they're not worried about the run as much, so they're getting back deeper. That time, Lockhart was in position because Hardy... Hardy was open, but the, the deepness of, uh, of the set on Lockhart uh, almost caused the interception. Kevin Brooks with the pressure on Marino, the late hit. Second and 10 off to Hardy, and triple team brought down to the 38-yard line. Rohrer was out there along with Lockhart and Francis from the corner. Getting in underneath here. Right? This this seemed like it was pretty well set up to go to Hardy. Uh, Hardy was well covered, but again, he put that bullet right in his gut. The secondary had things pretty well under control, but Hardy was a short guy underneath, and he just, you know, he's got the ability to get it off quick, but to drill it, and uh, you just can't you can't make a mistake as a defensive back because that ball is right where uh, Marino wants it to be. Miami has converted every third down situation so far. They have third and four here. was intended for Clayton and the ball got there in a hurry. Marino seems somewhat amused. Well, he threw that one too hard. Check the penalty with Jerry Markwright. And it will go against Miami. Dallas will decline because it brings up a fourth down. Oh, 
Wait a minute. I thought he was. He just reversed it. Yeah. He did change it. Officials said, hey, sorry, went the wrong way. It's going against the Cowboys. Cowboys defense was already off the field. Now they're going to have to come back on. First down. Danny Noonan, number 73, called for the penalty. The rookie out of Nebraska is getting more and more playing time. That was one of those probably hands that get pushed in the face. Yeah. One of those head slap or you or you drill drill a guy in the face mask and they call it on Noonan. And Randy White is very high on Danny Noonan. He thinks he's going to be a terrific player. So it's the automatic first down for the Dolphins at their own 47. Woody Bennett, the remaining back. Green to Bennett. That was tipped. See who got a hand on it. If uh, if history is any indication, it was too tall. But I think maybe it was Brooks. Well, Dallas is, you know, they're really coached. It uh, looks like too tall gets his hand on the ball there. Yeah, it was. But Dallas is coached. Once they have done everything they can to get to the quarterback and they see the ball released, they jump up in the air. And uh, Jones, of course, is tall enough anyway, and he's he's tipped a lot of passes in his career. Look at that graphic. Hasn't missed a game in his 13-year NFL career. Wow. He tipped two against the Giants, one of which went for a touchdown. Huge play. Marino. Underthrown and knocked away. Great job by Duper. He turned defensive back and knocked it away from Ron Francis. Marino throwing into double coverage here, Roger. Well, it shows his confidence in uh, Duper and Clayton. He did see the double coverage, but he felt, heck, it's uh, Duper's got as good a chance as anyone. He threw it right in there, and of course, Duper did his job. He almost caught the ball, but he at least knocked it away from the interception. Francis was right there. Third down, 10 yards to go for Miami. We have a 7-7 game in the second quarter. Glad you could join us tonight on ESPN. slowly or a late hit on Marino either one but looks like holding he took a blast mm -hmm. from Ed to call Jones <laughs> at the big gates pressure. a 28 yard gain big pressure holding number 57 offense that's Dwight Fair Stevenson down. the pro bowler perennial pro bowler considered by many to be simply the best in the business. Well, you Good get a is. chance to see another strength. There's Stevenson in the middle. He's kind of carousing him and uh, holding him and drilling him to the ground there. But Jones comes in, hits Marino. But the strength that Marino has, uh, it, it, you know, he can throw off balance and just get rid of that arm, that, that ball so quickly, but with strength. And he got it down there. Most quarterbacks could have got, come close to getting it at that distance. Third and corner. Utah comes again the screen to Stratford. He's in trouble. Albritton did a great job coming up from the secondary to slow it down. And Manny Hendricks was in on the tackle. And the Dallas defense gets the crowd pumped up at Texas Stadium. Fourth and 15, and Marino will come to the sideline to talk it over. What's he talking about there, Rod? Well, he's probably... Uh mentioning something to Strzok on on the uh, the previous the previous play because there was nothing there it was set up as a screen but he might be saying to Strzok that uh, you know who else was open on the previous play Reggie Roby lays one up a flag is down as Kelvin Martin takes the punt and gets it back to the 16 yard line six yard return after a 45 yard punt by Reggie Roby who can really air it out now we'll check the penalty for you with referee Jerry Markbright. Procedure against Miami. So Dallas will have the opportunity to make them kick it again if they'd like. 
let me tell you something. The Dolphins, historically the least Six penalized team. Of oh. Number 58 was in the backfield. Wow. Right down again. What makes that penalty even more egregious is the fact that it was a real mental kind of mistake, Roger. He hates any kind of penalties, but players out of position just got to kill Shuler. Yeah, he doesn't like the mental errors. He's very intense, and he's, uh, of course, a great disciplinarian as a coach, so the mental errors just uh, really bother him more than the physical errors. Twice last week penalized for too many men on the field. That's just devastating to shoot. Well, this time they had too few on the line of scrimmage. Rick Graff, the rookie from Wisconsin, was lined up in the backfield. Roby to punt again. Here they come, and Roby got rid of it and airs another one out. Martin Faircat signal, 22-yard line. 12 minutes, 19 seconds to go in the first half. A 40-yard kick and no return. We continue at 7 apiece. Okay, now, when he... It's January 16, 1972, and the Cowboys and the Dolphins meet in Super Bowl VI. The game's most valuable player award was voted to Roger Staubach, who led Dallas to its 10th straight win that year with a pair of touchdown passes. Dwayne Thomas added a scoring run, and Dallas defeated Miami and New Orleans for a Super Bowl title in just their 11th year as a franchise. For Tom Landry, it was the first of two Super Bowl victories. And they still honor Mr. Staubach, Roger to the rescue. You know, he pulled out 23 victories in the fourth quarter, 14 of those 23 in the last two minutes. Was there a greatest, greatest victory, Rod? I would say he, uh, well, you, Drew, you Drew were, Pearson, man. You were part <laughs> you of it. A lot of guys made part things of happen. Dallas I, takes over at its own 22, 7 7 second quarter. Pelora with a fake. He's only completed one out of four. That one was almost picked off by Offer Dahl. Pelora's been a star so far on the ground, but not in the air. Hey, Offerdahl does a nice job here. With, with Walker running the football away, he has Offerdahl recognized pass the play action immediately and was back in his zone coverage. Uh, he just did a nice job defending against the pass. Dallas has switched centers. George Lilja, number 67, free agent out of Michigan, is in there for veteran Tom Rafferty. And you can see Pelora has not done the job through the air, although he did throw for the touchdown. He has run for 57 yards. Walker delay. Cuts it outside, and not this time. Jackie Chip is there, 51. Mark Brown is there, and Brown is having a great year. The kind of year offered all had a year ago. I wanted to get back, uh, Mike, to the comeback victory in Roger Stoppard. What is the key element to, to coming up with a comeback victory, Roger? Well, perseverance. You just can't quit. you got to make sure that your teammates believe that you have the capability, whether it's a quarterback or a running back or receiver. It's a team effort, and people have to believe. So you have to work together in unison. You just can't quit. you got to have a lot of perseverance. Rafferty is back in there at center on third and nine. Pelora pressured out of the pocket, and they got him this time. Hugh Green, who used to be just about the best linebacker there was and may never return to that form, but he's in on passing situations. Well, he's just not the same uh, after suffering that patellar tendon injury, blowing his knee out a uh, couple of games into last season. Interesting story. Hugh Green, orphaned at age six, raised by his grandparents, came up through the ranks. Bobby Bethard said he was the greatest defensive player he'd ever seen in college football. Mike Saxon is on to punt, and Scott Schwady is deep to receive at his own 32-yard line. Pretty good kick by Saxon. Schwady, fair catch, makes it just inside the 40-yard line. A 36-yard kick and no return. Saxon is number two in net punting in the NFL. Football League is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By the 1988 German-engineered Volkswagens and your Volkswagen dealer. And by the Hartford, the insurance people of ITT. When you need us most, we're at our best. Miami with a football at its own 40-yard line. 7-7, second quarter, 10-42 to go in the half. Marino has already thrown for 74 yards. Max 
one protection, dumps it off to Hardy, and Hardy up to the 46-yard line. Flag is down, and it looked like the ball came out very late after he hit the ground. They'll rule him down. We'll check the penalty for you. Hardy has been very disappointed in his own performance. He's already dropped as many balls this year as he has in the last three or four, but the Dolphins very confident in his ability that he'll be back and make the good catches again. Marino is, a, is really a team leader. He's in the middle of that saying, hey, what's going on over here? They, you know, Shula's mentioned that Dan Marino really takes an interest in every aspect of the game. Number 34. That's Woody Bennett. And Bennett is in there because he is the Dolphins' best blocker. You'll see it from the end zone here. Looks like he hit uh, Gene Lockhart from behind. Woody Bennett, right there. Yeah, he's pushing him from behind. So that makes it first and 20. And the Dolphins often penalized here in the first half. Very unusual for a Don Shula team. And they go to Stanford. Oh, the cost. He's got a chance. Stratford caught from behind Francis and Everson Walls inside the 15. A 52-yard run, the longest of the year for Troy Stratford. That was Michael Downs, I believe, that really uh, called him deep. But again, it's uh, the Dallas expecting the pass. A little bit uh, leaning on the run. Giesler again knocks out Walls, and then Stratford gets to the outside. Francis is blocked downfield by Pruitt, and then, then it's off to the races here. But Downs, 26, comes in late in the picture, grabs him by, be from the uh, jersey and throws him to the ground. But a great run by Stratford, but excellent blocking at the point of attack. Very impressed with Stratford so far. First and 10 from the 14. Marino. Oh, the hands of Dan Johnson, the backup tight end. The ball thrown behind him, and he couldn't grab it. Johnson came back last week for the first time after an injury, had only one catch. That was for a touchdown. It could have been two for two. Well, Johnson releases a little bit to the outside, is pushed uh, back to the, comes back to the inside, and the ball's thrown to the other side, but it's a catchable uh, football right there. Johnson's got good hands, normally makes that catch. <laughs> Marino's upset. Uh, he's either, either upset that, that the ball was dropped or he threw it to the outside. Probably a little bit of both. Marino, six out of 11, but has hit only one of his last four. This is second and 10. Stratford on the delay. Slipped one tackle. Got a couple of yards out of something that looked like a loss. Jeff Rohrer made the tackle. You know, you talk about the drop balls. They've been plaguing the Dolphins. Last week, five drop balls, including a touchdown to Pruitt. What did you say to a receiver when he dropped the football, Roger? I really didn't say very much at all because I knew that I threw some passes that were into the ground or over their head, and they also made some great diving catches. But if and it can affect. It just depends on the receiver. Some you can make it a little bit of an encouragement that, hey, don't worry about it. I'll go to you the next time. It normally didn't say anything uh, uh, as far as criticism. Third and eight. Four-man rush. Time to throw. He got Clayton at the nine-yard line. That will be shy of the first down. And Everson Walls played it very well. He just didn't want him getting inside the five. And this is going to bring on Fouad Reves, who has only had five field goal opportunities all year long. He's made four of them. Shows you it's pretty explosive for the seven-pointer for this football team. Exactly. And how much a field goal team. And yeah, Marino puts him in the end zone. Yep. Reves will try a 26-yarder. Hey, you keep picturing that, though, that tight end open, and you, in your mind you're saying that that was a key play in this drive and makes a difference in four points uh, if he makes this field goal. Reves out of Strzok's hold, and it's good. Quad Reves, five out of six this year, and he has put Miami on top of Dallas, 10-7. In the NFL, Calvin Martin, the rookie for the Cowboys, Troy Stratford, the rookie for the Dolphins, teammates, roommates at Boston College, both grew up dreaming of playing for the teams they're playing for tonight. It does still happen, folks. Both impacting the game tonight, I might add. Martin almost broke the uh, kickoff for a touchdown. Troy Stratford with a couple of big runs. 
you know, Stratford's really quick. He gets that line of scrimmage so fast that uh, it really makes a difference. He's got excellent hands as a receiver also. Reveille to kick off. Got this one pretty well. And Martin at the four. Oh. He took a shot from Rick Graff, the rookie linebacker. And that's how you make your mark on special teams. Lore comes back in. They love Graf in Miami. They said you need a lunatic on defense, and he qualifies. They love his nasty demeanor. The second pick, uh, Wisconsin, 6'5", 245 for Graf. Coming along slowly. Well, Pelor is keeping him honest with the run, but he's got to start throwing the football. He's not going to win with the run, but you keep him honest, so he's got to start throwing the football when he gets a chance. Only one out of five passing so far. Great to walk in. Again. Pelor dives down at the 40, has another first down. Offerdahl had to bring him down. 72 yards rushing for Pelor. He's going to make everybody forget Walker. Does he cost the offense anything, though, when he heads upfield as quickly as he does? No, he's just gonna have to. He has to have that balance. That time he was looking for Cosby, and he saw Cosby wasn't wide open. But he didn't go to a secondary receiver. He just he just ran the ball. He's got to look for that secondary receiver when his main guys not open. That time I saw him looking at Cosby. Going to hit the back in the flat, but he decides to run. That's the secondary receiver is running. First and ten at the forty. Walker, the remaining back. Walker has it. Lunges into the line this time and brought down. Brown is up there for the tackle. We have 6.35 to go in the first half of play, and it's Miami on top, 10-7. To Dallas jumped to a 7-0 lead on a Pallor to Newsom pass. Stratford came back with a 19-yard run, and Reveille just moments ago hit from 26 yards out. So it's a 10-7 lead, and we have a second and seven for Dallas. Roy Firestone and Roger Staubach, our guest analyst. Glad to have you with us on ESPN. Nice fake to walk that time by Pelour, and here he goes. Chase out of the and he'll get to the sideline. Blackwood chases him out about half a yard shy of a first down. There is a flag now. And one thing, Roger, to follow up on your comment about him looking at only one receiver, they have not gotten a great deal of pressure on him, so he really hasn't had to run that much. Well, that's true. They. Miami's only had 12 sacks all year, so they're not going to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. That's not their their uh, their defense. They'd like to get more on him, but they don't rush a lot of people. They don't blitz a lot. So you've this last call, number 49, defense, five yards, first down. William Judson. Boy, he was called a lot last week. Four flags, pass interferences on Judson. Shula's about had it with Judson, I think. He had he heard his number announced more often than he would like last week. Also burned for a couple of touchdowns, too. And he is the best cover man in that Dolphin secondary. First down at the Miami 45-yard line. Dallas trying to tie it up or better go ahead. And they'll go straight up the middle with the fullback, Timmy Newsom, who broke one earlier in the ballgame. A college basketball already coming on ESPN. We've got three live games on Friday. I hope you saw the Syracuse-North Carolina game. First, Kansas will face Chaminade. That's in the Maui Classic. We really had to force some people to go over there and cover that one. 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Then at 7 o'clock, uh, Dick Vitale got the, got the great assignment. He's going to the Great Alaska Shootout. you got Syracuse against Alaska Anchorage and Michigan against Miami. Dick would have just got the same Walker on the toss. They got him at the 40 yard line. Offerdahl again in on the tackle. And Roy, you know as well as anyone how well Offerdahl had played before the injury and how much the Dolphin defense really sank when he left. Yeah, he had the bicep tear, which is a very painful injury. Steve Garvey in baseball had the same kind of injury. Literally, the bicep ripped from the bone. He missed 10 weeks. Extremely painful. Takes a long time to. If to have any kind of therapy for that kind of uh, muscle tear. He's back, and he is back with a vengeance. He said before, nine tackles in his first game back last week. Herschel Walker has gained 41 yards tonight, but 10 of those 12 rushes have been for three yards or less, so Miami's going to find out at holding him down. Palua this time hangs in the pocket, throws to Newsom. Newsom covered 
beautifully by David Fry out of Purdue, a backup linebacker, and he planted him as soon as he caught it. Well, Pelor is just going to, you know, have in his mind that he's not going to make a mistake. He's not going to throw that ball in any questionable mm -hmm. coverage, and you know, that's good and bad. you got a guy like Marino. He makes a mistake. He forgets about it. Pelor just doesn't want a mistake. He can see that in his in his style of play, and he's just not throwing the ball, taking any chances. And I, he's going to have to take a chance or two because there's some receivers in that middle intermediate area that he's going to have to start drilling the ball into. Him. A little too tentative. Yes. Mike Saxon is on the punt. Schwedes is back there with Blackwood. Saxon is great at getting the ball down inside the 20. Schwedes, fair catch at the 9. That's the 12th time this year that Saxon has put the ball inside the opponent's 20-yard line. Back in a moment. Years old, the number three all-time winningest coach, Tom Landry, taking a lot of heat. We'll tell you about it in just a few moments. Miami takes over inside its own 10. Marino will throw it from anywhere. To Hampton, Rohrer has him at the 15-yard line and drives him back. Last week, when the Cowboys, or a couple of weeks ago, when they were flat against the Lions, Tex Schramm was quoted saying, the president of the Cowboys, that the teacher, meaning Landry, must teach, that he's not teaching enough anymore. Your thoughts, Roger? Well, he was, that was in the heat of the battle. They'd lost to Detroit, and Walker only touched the ball once in that fourth quarter. So Tex, Tex wants to win very badly. That's his, uh, and he's a fierce competitor. And through the years, uh, Landry's had his challenges. He's, he's always worked his way through them. And I still feel he's a, uh, heck of a football coach, and he'll work his way through this situation. Second and five for Marino. Got a rush this time, throws incomplete, intended for his tight end, Dan Johnson. You know, the thing that bothers me is criticism of Shula or criticism of Landry. Coaches make mistakes. They're human beings. But look at what those guys have done for nearly 30 years. That's almost impossible to criticize. We saw a couple of letters in the paper today yep. asking for Landry's resignation. If you were here in uh, 1969 and 70, there would have been probably more letters in the paper asking <laughs> for his resignation. So that, that's nothing new when you're in a bit of a down. Uh, after 74, it was the same thing. But Dallas came back in 75 and got in the Super Bowl. Time is the test, and they both passed it. Bumping, Francis ran into Duper, and a flag goes down. It wasn't much of a bump, but it was there. So those are tough calls right there. Uh, obviously, the ball was a little bit short, and Francis has the right to the ball. Duper had the stop, so they ran into each other, but it was pushing. particularly well thrown football it appears to me as though Marino's under throwing a lot tonight Roger well he got that ball a little bit late he threw it a little bit late didn't get it out there but here's here again here's the uh, receiver is going deep the ball's short so he stops and Francis has a right to the ball I, I don't believe that's a, uh, that that is interference right there on the replay it certainly didn't look like it crowd saw the replay too Forget it this time for Stratford. He is wrapped up in a hurry by Jim Jeffcoat the first time we've called his name tonight. For a change, a number one pick for the Cowboys in recent years, showing his stuff. Jim Jeffcoat, maybe the hardest worker on the team. Yeah, Jeffcoat escapes inside of Hardy's block and makes a play. Jeffcoat was hurt last year at the end of the year, which kind of hurt him uh, as far as the last part of the season, but he's healthy and playing well this year. He was drafted before Dan Marino was drafted. Four spots. Marino unloads, and he's got Johnson in Dallas territory at the 47-yard line, covered that time by Gene Lockhart. Brooks was putting the pressure on him. And we have the two-minute warning here in the first half. The Dolphins leading the Cowboys. It's 10 7. Game of the regular season. And Dan Marino throws to Jimmy Cephalo for a record setting 37th touchdown pass in a single season. Marino ended the year with 48. And if that record can ever be broken, Marino is the man to do it. Dan Marino. 
for every eight completions, he throws a touchdown pass. That's a pretty heavy stat. That's unbelievable. He's just, uh, he's at the top of the pack, and there's some great quarterbacks. You saw the shootout with McMahon and Elway, and there's a lot of good ones. Marino, statistically, though, is, uh, is above the rest. The numbers he has racked up are absolutely frightening. I mean, he's going to catch guys like Unitas before he's 30 years old if he remains healthy. Blitz coming. He reads it, gets it out to Stratford. Very close to first down territory. They'll mark it inside the 40. Now you just can't get to him. He reads defenses so well, and he unloads it so quickly. Now, look at these. These are the, the list of quarterbacks that were selected before Dan Marino. Remember this. Marino has had more three touchdown games than Elway, O'Brien, Eason, Kelly, and Blackledge combined. More three touchdown games. But in the last couple of years, he's won only about less than half of those three touchdown games. It shows you how porous the Dolphin defense has been. First and ten. Stratford. Oh, nice hole up the middle. And Stratford down to the 32-yard line. Bill Bates, last man up off the pile. You know, in Dallas, uh, they keep their run defense in there when the Dolphins only have two wide receivers. If they bring in three, Dallas is switching around. But mm -hmm. that, Miami's running against Dallas's kind of quasi-flex. You don't use the the uh, the same gap defense when you're playing Marino, but they got their linebackers in there, and they're running against Dallas's run defense. We're down to a minute 24 to go first half. Dolphins up by three, looking for more. Marino with all day, throws in the flat. Nice play by Everson Walls, who came up and knocked it away from Mark Clayton. Walls is really a cluer, boy. He can read the quarterback. He reads the quarterback set. He saw the release, and then he just closed real fast right here. Good, good close with Walls. He read that play all the way and did a nice job. Almost intercepted the pass. Everson Walls could lose $860,000 in annuities for his strike position, for staying out during the strike. He said if he has to, he'll take Tex Ram to court. $800,000? Third and three, Miami. Jim Jensen, the king of third downs, comes in and catches the ball. Now it's incomplete. All Britain was over there on the coverage, and apparently Jensen couldn't hold it. This is an interesting call right here. They've gone to Jensen on third downs out of the backfield. Jensen just couldn't keep possession right here. He was hit, popped the ball, started coming loose, almost, uh, almost a fumble, but he didn't really have possession ruled it incomplete but it's a call here I, I think Shula made the right decision to go for the even though it's fourth and three to go for the first down instead of the field goal now there's some confusion getting on and off this is what happened last week Jensen came in then went off four wide receivers on the field fourth and three Stratford on the run, and Stratford down to the 27-yard line. He's got the first down. Kevin Brooks made the tackle. That's a gutsy call right there. I was looking for, they had four wide receivers in there, looking for some, some kind of uh, pick for a short completion. He tricked them with the uh, inside play. But Stratford's got that explosive speed. He's at that line of scrimmage, bam, be, and you don't have to hold your blocks as long as you just hold that block for a split second. He's there, and he gets two or three yards. Uh, good call. And a good block here from the all-pro Dwight Stevenson, right over the middle, right over the nose tackle here. There he is, 57. Again, they're looking for pass, and he they tricked him, and uh, Francis in the middle was looking for Stratford man-to-man -man in the pass, and he kind of took a step backwards, and uh, they crossed him with the run. We are down to 105 to go, and Roger, you always had the reputation as the as the king of the two-minute drill, the guy who could bring a team from behind. Marino does it as well as anyone in the game now, doesn't he? Well, there's there's quite a few that really uh, have their their adrenaline pumping at the right time, and in Marino, the Montanas, the Elways, uh, McMahon's, there's there's, a, there's a, an array of quarterbacks that love the two-minute period because it's an exciting period of time. There's a, it's a period of time where you really uh, function at, at your best as far as that adrenaline pumping and Marino with that arm those receivers can really make things happen in the two minute period. This will be the tenth play of the drive. Four man rush.
push in, dropped by Hardy. And that is what has happened to Bruce Hardy this year. He's dropped about a half dozen passes that normally he would have caught. And you know the irony is he may have the best hands yeah. of anybody on this football team. Incredibly resilient football players come back from a number of injuries. It's a former quarterback, by the way, folks, at Arizona State under Frank Cush. Having problems holding on to the ball tonight. You notice Marino's throwing a lot of passes backing up. Dallas is putting pretty decent pressure on him in the passing situation. He's backing up, and he's not getting that extra split second he'd like to have. He's getting some uh, uh, very good rush without the blitz. Directing traffic now. Marino, 10 out of 19, but by our count, he's had four balls dropped. Can he get it off in time? Just beat the 30-second clock, throws it. Intercepted by Ron Francis. The rookie out of Baylor stops the drive. And Marino is not happy about the setup he had before he got that playoff. He was really rushed. Well, he was. Duper was cut to the inside, but Francis, Francis read that all the way. He took the inside position. Marino again was backing up through the ball, but Francis just had the inside covered very well and made a nice, nice catch. In addition to covering the receiver, he caught the football. And again, a poorly thrown ball by Marino, I think. Well, behind he was his man. Trying to drill it into the inside, though. Uh, Francis anticipated that. He, you know, he's a he. He, he clued the play, and he, they were rushing. They barely got the ball off. There's one, one second. second, yeah. But he drilled that ball to the inside. It's a tough pass to intercept, but Francis did a nice job. Now you've got an interesting situation as Walker breaks it out. I was just going to say, you have a quarterback who's done all of his damage running. What do you do with only 50 seconds to go? Well, what do you do? You give it to Herschel. Well, Dallas likes to screen or draw on first down the two-minute period, and that was a great draw play. Walker is a real load, and now Pelora will go to the sideline. Stay with us at halftime. Chris Berman will be in the studio and recap week nine of the NFL. Tom Jackson will be there to analyze the first half. And Roy and Roger will have a discussion about the service academy and the five-year commitment for athletes, something that Roger Staubach did. Some other guys would like to get out of, and we invite you to stay tuned for that at halftime because they've got some interesting opinions on it. Your assessment so far of the job Pelora has done in the first half did essentially what you said he would do. Well, he's he's really uh, has been geared not to make mistakes, let Herschel run the football and then hit the uh, the play action passes. He did throw the one in the end zone that was thrown away, but overall he's played a, a tentative first half throwing the ball, but he's run very well and he's uh, he's moved the football. We had an exciting beginning, both teams, but it's mm -hmm. they, they've pretty well stabilized and we haven't had much scoring since. Roger, what are the plays you call for the last 40 seconds? Well, they're, they're, they usually go to the two. They'll have two plays, usually a screen draw, something short, and come, come running back with a more of a, a, a longer play. This time Four man rush, Pelour hangs in the pocket, throws, and this one is intercepted. William Judson picked it off, intended for Kelvin Edwards and badly underthrown. And they had a they had a long time to talk over in the sideline, so they made up their mind that they felt Edwards could get to the corner, but Judson, Judson stayed outside. They were not obviously in the defense that they had talked about on the sideline, because that was a pass to Edwards all the way. He's looking kind of looking down the middle then he comes back he really had his mind made up to go to Edwards tried to look Judson off but he did not he was looking in the middle just threw the ball without looking Judson hung to the outside they were really in the wrong defense I'm sure that they thought they would be in when they talked on the sideline here are the numbers on Pelour. he has gained 78 yards rushing in the first half but passing he is only two out of seven for eight yards a touchdown and two interceptions so you've got another running back yeah make him a tailback yeah. that's your answer 35 seconds and two timeouts is a lot of time for Dan Marino. And he'll start from his own 36. Dolphins up 10-7. See if they can capitalize on the break. Jensen got to the 45-46 yard line. Brought down by Vince Albright, one of the backup safeties. And Marino playing hurry up. You see the clock in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Two timeouts left, so they can stop it, but they've got to hurry. near side intended for Duper but Ron Francis was the closest one to it. I think Marino just threw that one away after he saw the cover. Well he might be upset at himself also because uh, Francis had the short coverage. Bates was deep so there was no chance on the short pass so I think Marino misread 
what or 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 Duper was supposed to run a different route, but see, Francis had him short. There yeah, was help. Fell. There Duper was help. Fell. Deep. Yeah, he had. Eleven seconds to go. Miami needs about 30 yards to get the field goal right. Maybe 25. That's a big gap in that middle up there. That. And that's where he throws. Stratford made the catch. 32-yard oh. line, and they'll call a timeout with four seconds left and give. After a 23-yard gain, give their field goal kicker a chance at it. And what a fabulous catch in the part of Stratford. This guy is like coiled wire at five foot eight inches. Over the shoulder, Roger, making this catch in traffic, taking the big hit, and still getting up and calling timeout after all of this. Well, that was a good defense if it's the end of the game and you have to win with a touchdown, but a field goal at this moment, they were just so deep that middle was wide open. If he makes this field goal, they pretty much uh, gave him an opportunity there with the defense they called. It will be a 48-yard try, and that would match the longest successful kick that Reves has made this year. He already has one field goal in this game, 26 yards, to give them that uh, three-point margin at 10 to 7. I think all in all, both defenses have played rather well here in the first half, and that's that was certainly the concern of Miami. Dallas defense has, has been playing well most of the season. Yeah, this game's a funny game at the start of this game everybody do you think there'd be 28 points on the scoreboard by each team but uh, they bet. settled down the defensive have played well they put a good pressure on Marino he hasn't had enough time to really pick out his receivers Strock holds and it's Reveille from the 48 yard line or oh, for a 48 yard attempt excuse me line drive and he hooked it left so they get the interception, but come up empty on the break. You're watching the Miami Dolphins and the Dallas Cowboys on ESPN. We're at halftime. The Dolphins lead by three. Let's go back to the studio and your host, Chris Berman. All right, Mike Patrick, thank you very much. And uh, so the game, which started... Schwedes 81 are deep to receive from the Miami Dolphins. at the one. And trips as he crosses the 20, gets it out to the 24-yard line where Jesse Penn makes the tackle on special teams. Here are the first half statistics in Miami with a nice lead in total yards and those two turnovers for Dallas. But what really stands out there, eight yards passing for the Cowboys. Eight. Well, on that, the running statistic right there, probably... Uh, I mean, over half of that's by their quarterback. Ballor. So Ballor has made a decision to try not to make mistakes and run the football. He needs to, in this half, he needs to think about that secondary receiver and throwing the football. It'd be interesting to see how long they might go with Steve Ballor if they remain behind. Hampton. And Jeff Coat was held by Hardy, who got a takedown out of that one. Hardy just tackled him from behind. This has been not a memorable game for Mr. Hardy tonight. Dropping right. footballs, holding balls. This has just not been one of his stellar performances. Watch number 84 on the screen. Well, this running play has been good, but look, look at those those arms go around Jeff Coat initially, then he grabs his ankle, which is uh, <laughs> obviously illegal. And I think there's two or three referees that saw that. I saw a lot of flags flying in that play. It was a heck of a tackle by Bruce Hardy. Yeah. He was on the wrong side of the ball. Up. Yeah, too, yeah, too bad he's playing offense. That's right. I just can't get over how many penalties the Dolphins have been charged in the last couple of weeks. Just got to be killing Shulin. This is, as we said before, the least penalized team historically in the last five years in the NFL. Not the last two weeks, though. Right. First through 20 for Marine. Dumps this one off after about the 21-yard line. Tony Nathan got, got the catch. Roar and Bates went on the stop. Here's what the Dolphins did in the first half as far as their possessions. The first drive went for seven plays and a touchdown. Then they had to punt the ball away after an eight-play drive that didn't consume very much. Reves hit a field goal to make it a 10-7 ball game. Then Marino was intercepted as they got the ball down in the deep in Dallas territory and the missed field goal into the first half. Second and 11.
Stradford is now in there, along with Davenport, number 30. And Stradford on the sweep. Got a couple of good blocks, cut it back. Great balance across the 30 to the 31. Nice call, too, on third and seven, huh? To go with the running play, cross them up a little bit, Rod? Well, Dallas is bringing in those seven defensive backs in the, in the passing situation, so Miami is running against that uh, passing defense, especially on second down, doing a nice job at it. Of course, Stratford is uh, having an excellent game. He's making the right cuts. He's uh, bouncing off of a couple of uh, tackles. He's doing a good job running the football. Only guy the whole season who's had a 100-yard game for the Dolphins, Troy Stratford. Lure, you see, is the leading rusher for the Dallas Cowboys, 78 yards. Third and three, Marina goes to the shotgun. Jensen, number 11, is in there. They love to go to him. Stays in the block this time, and he floats it sideline incomplete. Intended for Pruitt, and back there right in front of him, Ron Francis with excellent coverage. So Dallas will have to punt it away, and Roby comes on. In any uh, uniform, Reggie Roby has the most distinctive punting style, maybe in the history of the NFL. First time Miami has only run three plays and had to punt. Kelvin Martin's deep to receive. Great punt. Roby just kicks it so high. And Martin did the smart thing. He got out of the way of a moving truck. A 49-yard punt, no return. We'll be back in a moment. The of the National Football League is brought to you by Konica's Royal Copiers. Not just tough, tough to beat. And by Mazda, bringing performance and value together. That's the Mazda way. At the Pro Bowl on ESPN, the Travelers Corporation will present the Travelers NFL Man of the Year Award to the player whose on-field performance is complemented by significant community involvement. This year's nominee from the Dolphins, Glenn Blackwood, the safety, and from the Dallas Cowboys, defensive end Jim Jeffco. Cowboys come out with Pelour at the helm, first and 10, their own 21. Down by three. Walker. Just so quick, cuts it outside. Brown and Langford drove him out of bounds. Here's what the Cowboys were able to do when they had the football in the first half. And like the Dolphins, their first drive resulted in a touchdown. They took a 7-0 lead on Pelour's uh, touchdown pass. Then Pelour was intercepted after a pretty good-looking 12-play drive. Then three plays and punt. Then six and another punt. And then the interception near the end of the first half. We will probably not see Tony Dorsett tonight. He carried just one time a week ago and has a bruised shoulder. They'd like not to use him. If they can help him. Walker. Game tackles. He got to the 29-yard line. Dolphins have done a pretty good job on it. You mentioned Tony Dorsett a few moments ago. People say, well, you know, Tony's had a great career. He's still got plenty left. But, you know, he has nothing to prove. Why doesn't he retire? fact is he stands to lose about two million dollars in annuities if he retires now if the Cowboys trade him or waive him they have to pay him that money that's the story behind why Tony Dorsett just doesn't hang it up that and also the fact Roger he's still got some playing left well I think I think you're right Roy. I don't think you just bring it in dollars and cents with a competitor like Tony Dorsett he's competed since high school and college and he's got some uh, records ahead that he wants to to break and I, I he feels definitely he can move in at least behind Walter Payton, and he does have uh, a couple of years of football left, so it's not just dollars and cents. That's a, that's a real competitor over there, number 33. The injured player is Nate Newton, number 61. He's the left guard, and you can see it on the right side of your screen. Well, Newton was hurt earlier in the year also, and they've gone back to that knee, and looks like he got hit right in the kneecap, and had that him nicely in the planted, name. and he got it. We'll be back in a moment and check on it. The injured Cowboy player, Nate Newton, number 61, has a bruised thigh. He may return later tonight. He is the best athlete on that offensive line. He was the star of training camp. And there is Newton, number 61. This is third and two. Floor wants to throw. Dumps it off. Lucy. First down and more. 
Blackwood lowered a shoulder and knocked him down, but it's a first down Cowboy. And we got a flag, too. May have been a late hit, perhaps. Gain of 10, which gives Pelour 18 yards passing in this ballgame. That's going to be a gain of uh, more than 10. They're going to tack that on. on Bud Brown called for spearing and that'll be 15. Well they had third and two they went for the pass and uh, 59 that time went inside Brzezinski and of course they went outside and there's Bud Brown spearing so that's really a 25 yard gain. Jeff Zimmerman number 76 the third round draft choice out of Florida 316 pounds is in there at the left guard for Newton. Walker Looked like the ball hit the ground, but it's loose and it's recovered by Langford. Now Langford fumbles the ball, knocked out of bounds. It'll be Miami football as it was touched, but not recovered out of bounds. Now that looked like Walker hit the ground well, before it came we'll loose. We'll see a replay on that one. Well, I guess that's what the uh, judgment is going to be, but the referees are signaling first down for Miami. All right, here it is again. Inside power running by Herschel. Takes the hit. Bud Brown and no, Bam. It's loose. Brzezinski, it's, uh, he hadn't that, hit the ground. That, Good that's, call. That's a fumble. There's another fumble right there, but it's knocked out of bounds without possession, so it's still Miami's football. No question about it. He fumbles it before he hits the ground here. Well, it's kind of obstructed there. Brzezinski on the stop. Yeah. Brzezinski caused the fumble, and, of course, it was picked up by Langford, but there's no possession right there. Uh, Edwards had a chance to get possession, but he didn't do it. Be able to see it from this angle perfectly. Boom, right there, and it's out before the uh, well, they hit the ground. They are reviewing it with a replay official, Norm Schachter, and the communicator, Jan Van Duzer, upstairs. But the uh, replay looks pretty conclusive on that, and there is the replay booth. They're taking a look at a couple of different angles. I don't even think there's a doubt. I don't even know why they're... they're looking at it myself well I think if they had the same angle that we did on the original play it looked like he was down that's the beauty of the replay you know life's amazing you can look at the same screen and watch <laughs> isn't that right <laughs> watch it everybody I, I don't think there's a question that wasn't a fumble either so it, there might be a After further review, the play stands. First down. this is the angle that shows it right here and it comes comes free that left knee would have been the only thing obstructed. It didn't uh, seem to hit the ground, so it's a fumble. And the replay officials say the call should stand, and it's a break for Miami. The Dolphins have the ball at the 36. A lot of scoring early, but right now, they're stuck on that 10 to 7. Marino has thrown for only 139 yards in this game, and that is not much for Dan Marino, the master of the 300-yard-plus contest. Actually, Great. move by Stratford. Great Dodges running. one tackle. Brought down by Downs and Roar. I am really impressed with Troy Stratford. This is a fourth round draft pick, and he has really come on like gang. He had a fumble last week, a bad one, too. Well, this is no gain right here until he jukes uh, Francis. He makes that move right, right here. There's Francis, and he ducks his head, makes an inside move, and gets five yards. It's only 5'9", 191 pounds on that small frame, and he's a real slasher. Second and four now for Miami. Stratford again. Oh, oh, what a move. What a move. And there's another one, and he dives for the first down yardage at the 46-yard line. If Miami with Stratford has a semblance of a running game, they're going to scare everybody to death every Sunday. Yeah, well, Bates was like a matador in this play. He was getting ready to tackle him, and now you see him, now you don't. Right here, he makes this move on Bates, and Bates just oh. misses him completely. And, of course, he spins right here. Walls at least knocks him down. I'm going to go for the measurement. You know, when you talk about the offensive running game for the Dolphins, and they've got it, it shows you how important the running game is setting it up for the pass. They have not had a thousand yard rusher in eight years, and they're not going to have one this year, it doesn't look like. Nine years they haven't had a thousand yard rusher. 
you got two masters going at each other right here, and I know Shul is saying, well, Landry's looking at the fact we don't run on first down, we don't run very much, so tonight their game plan is to run a lot more, obviously, and with success, you continue to run more. Stratford, the lone back. Four-man rush, a lot of time for Marino to Stratford. Oh. Look out! Directing traffic! Go! Oh, 25! 20-yard line brought down from behind by Jeff Rohr. It's a gain of 31 yards, and Miami's intent is obvious. You get it to Stratford whenever you can. Again, it's a first down uh, play right here, and Marino's being patient. He's going short. Dallas has been doing a good job earlier, but Stratford has got the moves. Look at on, on downs right here. He oh. makes a move, and everybody at Boston College knows what he can do. Now the... Uh, the nation knows that there's a great running running back as well as receiver in Miami. Dolphins on the march first and ten. Dallas 20. Davenport in as the lone remaining running back. Hampton goes to a wing. Marino to Davenport. And he'll try to work on him. Lost the ball, but it goes out of bounds. Michael Downs, the man over there driving him out along with Gene, the hitting machine Lockhart. Surprised to see Ron Davenport on the field. This guy has been in Shula's roomy doghouse almost all season long. But they're giving him another shot tonight to, uh, to hopefully make a, a better performance out of it. He's had a lot of fumble problems. Couldn't get into the end zone uh, last year. He's coming out of the game now, but a pretty good effort there. You know, Miami's really doing a good job mixing up. You're seeing a team that really is mixing up the pass in person first down and the run and inside that 20 I, I think it's good to throw on first down as they did now it's second and five. What a beautifully called game by the Dolphins. Comes the blitz Marino with time. Duper very close to the first down yard it's just outside the 10. Michael Downs on the stop. Haven't heard much about Clayton and Duper tonight. They've done a good job there but Stratford has really hurt him. People talk the difference between Clayton and Duper. Clayton is the leaper. Duper is the speedster. In fact, Duper never played high school football, which is kind of an interesting uh, stat, I suppose. Clayton, the better athlete than Duper at 5'9". Clayton uh, has something like a 36-inch vertical leap, but Duper is the burner. He's the guy that before long they're going to go to. Marino's Clay been perfect on this drive. Three out of three for 43 yards. Back to Clayton. Clayton is uh, one Mark's brother, if you will, Mark Clayton, Mark Duper, who will never be mistaken for Harpo. By that, I mean he is the big talker. Loves to talk all day long. Brooks was injured in that play. He just went off. But the rules that were changed in 79 really make it uh, very nice for these, these small, quick receivers downfield because they can't be hit past five yards. Noonan in the Dallas defensive line on third and inches. Bennett, 244 pounds of flag goes down as Bennett pounded his way to the 10 yard line. Marino thinks it's on Dallas. Well, 244 pounds came to a screeching halt in a hurry. Dallas defensive line really stopped him that time. Looks like it's against the Dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> and it is. That's interesting. That, uh, I assume they made it. If they didn't make it, I'd be tempted to, Miami, to declaim the six thing. men on the line of scrimmage. Oh, again, players out of position. Yeah. What does that reflect, Roger? Well, it's... You know, it's uh, Miami's a well-coached, well-disciplined team. It, it, it reflects at least maybe a lack of concentration on the pe behalf of the players, which uh, is, is inexcusable, or they've just not focused on in practice, uh, making sure you're not penalized in your formation situation. You need to light a match right now. You could use Don Shula's forehead. <laughs> Third and six. Dallas comes on the blitz. Marino with time, but badly thrown. Duper covered by Francis. Duper went inside. Marino threw outside. And the Dallas defense makes a stand. Duper just back. He's playing with torn rib cartilage, a very painful injury. Hurts every time you breathe. Well, there's a communication breakdown there. Marino was talking to Duper, and obviously uh, that was an excellent opportunity because 
Miami really blocked well. It was a blitz, and it was man-to-man -man out there. Francis did a good job on Duper, but Marino expected a different route, obviously. Reves will try from 23. He's hit from 26, missed from 48. Excuse me, from the 23-yard line, so it's a 33-yard field goal. A line drive, but he got it through. And the Dolphins extend their lead to six at 13-7. We have 7.52 to go, third quarter. Captain Larry Chambers from Spring, Texas, in the 62nd consecutive year that the Goodyear Blimp has appeared at the nation's top sporting events. Glad to have him with us tonight. Graves to kick off. Darrell Clack at the goal line. And Jensen was down there to get the first piece of Darrell Clack, who dove out past the 20-yard line. That last field goal, very, very close by Ruvays. Take a look. Almost hits the upright. Look at this. Hooking, hooking. Oh. Wow. Well, with that angle, it looked like he was pretty good inside of it until it got by it. Scoring drive, 48 yards, 33-yard field goal by Ruvays. His second of the ball game. And it's spotted at the 24 for Dallas. Steve Fallour at the controls. He has completed two passes so far tonight. Make it three. He's back to throw on first down. All the time in the world. Dumps it off. Newsom. Newsom dives out to the 30. Covered by Jackie Ship. You know, Walker is really a uh, fierce competitor. He does not fumble very often. He fumbled in that last drive. I wouldn't be surprised. You're not going to see Herschel uh, run a long one before this thing's all over. I know inside that he feels he caused that last three points, and he's thinking about that on the sideline. He's back in the game, and Miami ought to watch old Herschel. Pelour only four out of nine, 25 yards. He is rushed for 78 yards. Walker picking his way along the line, and the Dolphins gang tackle him at the 32. It's what you better do with Herschel Walker. A factor we should consider is Herschel Walker wearing the defenses down. I mean, just to so many carries, he's a punishing runner. It seems to do it late in the game, and he's more effective late in the game than he is earlier in the game. That's right, and, and he's the kind of guy that can get, get stopped 15, 18 carries in a row, then he breaks a big one. That defense of Miami is doing a heck of a job tonight. They're aware of that. Uh, they just can't get complacent because he can break one real quick and tonight he's been pretty consistent he's getting the uh, the good yardage but that fumble really hurt him after a long run they were burned by Dickerson a week ago against the Colts 154 yards and now Pelour has to use one of his timeouts with 622 to go in the third quarter he wants to talk it over with Tom Landry on the sideline timeout on the field we'll be back in a moment timeout on a third and one with 622 left in the third quarter not a real great timeout to call well there was some confusion between the sidelines and the uh, the huddle having the right people in there in a close game you sure don't want to give up a timeout in the third quarter but again on third and one they didn't want to uh, take a chance on having to punt so it was just inopportune and poor communication Herschel Walker 81 yards rushing better get the ball on third and one first down the 39-yard line. Ball came loose. Referee did not give any indication. First, he reached down like he was going to pick up the football, then let it go because I don't think he heard a whistle. There's a penalty also back there. Blackwood says it's against the Cowboys. And the officials have not indicated yet who has possession. The penalty will be against Dallas. Number 68, offense, turned down. Crawford Kerr, the right guard, so they spread around the holding call. Now let's take a look at the fumble here, or was it a fumble? Uh, I believe he was, no, he was down. Yeah, he, he had definitely it. down. You know, on a, on a short yardage play, a quick hitting play like that to get holding is, uh, <laughs> it's almost inexcusable to have, have a need to hold when you're looking for about a yard. Yep. So now, instead of third and one, or instead of a first down, it's third and 11 for Steve Fallour goes to shotgun. Throws back over the middle of Walker. Trying to get to the first down, and he got it. Herschel Walker to the 37-yard line, and he got it all by himself.
You see a lot of gifts here. Catching the football, power, speed, all on one play. Good job by Steve Pelour that time also. He started to run and then threw the ball on the run. At that point, Walker probably didn't have the first down. That extra effort got the first down. But also, Pelour got outside instead of running, and he probably would have got eight or nine yards. He threw it back to Walker, and he made a good decision. Don Shulin not happy with the way the defense let Walker get away and get the first down. Pelour with a lot of time, dumps it off to Walker again. Another first down out to the 48-yard line. And Pelour really showing some control right now. Yeah, Floor is settled down. He's he's taken that secondary receiver. That time, that, that looked like Renfro was the receiver, but he, he realized that Renfro was covered, and he went to Walker as his outlet, and he's uh, definitely settled down. Here's the difference so far. Second half, four out of four, 42 yards. First half, two for seven and eight yards. Across the 50 to the Miami 48-yard line, dragged down by Bud Brown. You get a few completions under your belt, and it uh, it really helps Pelour, mentally. Pelour, of course, a fifth-round pick. Cowboys had a shot at Montana. Of course, they had Roger and uh, Danny White back then. They had a shot at Marino. They went with uh, Hogaboom. Maybe this is the guy for the future. A few other people had a shot at Marino. That's, oh, right. that's true. Very true. Made a, made a mistake there. Had a poor senior season in Pitt. Pulled a lot of people. Floor on the playing roll. Brown is after him. He throws Ooh, it back. That could be a fumble. They were still after it, trying to make sure. It looked like it went forward, so it'll be an incomplete pass. I mean, they rolled to the right, right. had Newsom back on the left trying to set up yeah. a screen. I didn't mean to fumble. It looked like a lateral. Lateral. Almost, but, uh, it was close. In fact, I, I, I think it was a lateral. Trying to set up a play, perhaps, or was it just a desperation? Oh, no. Now, that was set up all the way. He was rolling right, and watch the uh, the fullback this time, Newsom. He just fakes, hits the ground, and then he pops back up. This is a called play. But uh, number 51 that time, Brown, Mark, oh. Mark, Mark Brown, but it was a lateral. And, uh, it was. Yeah, Newsom was smart. He recognized it. And also, uh, number 50 for the Dolphins. Jackie Ship. Jackie Ship was there also, and he had to push Newsom out of the way, or he might have got that uh, mm. that lateral. Very smart play by Ship. That was a forced play, too. Maybe he should have taken the loss and risk a play like that. Well, that's, that's one of those... Uh, it's really kind of a gadget play. They, it's a rollout, and his only job is to turn back around and, and believe that that fullback's there. And, of course, uh, with Brown down his neck, he threw it, and Chip did a good job staying home, though, and watching Newsom. You were always known, had a reputation throughout the league, as one of the best actors on screen passes to make it look like you were being chased. Dallas always ran the screen very well. We did a good job in the screen. We worked on it a lot. Of course, we had... Uh, the type of backs that could really make things happen if you got the screen out to them also. So the ball is marked at the 38 yard line. It will be third and 20. What do you call on a third and 20 here, Roger? Well, you, you got it. You know, at this stage, you try to. You have to get it all. So if you, you know, you really have to get into that intermediate, that that deep in route, about 20 yards is a is a good play in this situation. Dolphins come with four. The Lord flushed out again. And he won't get the first down this time. Driven out of bounds at the 44. And to bring up a punting situation for the Cowboys. Renfro is a little frustrated downfield. He was on a deep type of in route. And you, you might have to take a little chance. He's thrown two interceptions. One that was not really a meaningful interception. Didn't hurt anything. The other one was costly. And he's thinking, you know, a young quarterback mentally, the game is so mental. He's thinking about not making a mistake again. Uh, but you have to take a chance maybe on third and 20. He didn't elect to do it, and, uh, of course, they're punting now. This is Scott Schwades, number two in the AFC in punt returns, averaging more than 14 yards a kick. And Saxon. Beautiful punt that time by Saxon. Really hung it up. Schwades let it go, and it will bounce into the end zone. A touchback. So Miami will take over at the 20-yard line. A 56-yard kick by Mike Saxon. 
Hope you'll be with us next Sunday. Starting at 11.30 a.m., you'll see NFL Game Day, and all of our studio folks will take you around the league, show you what's going to happen, and then at 7 o'clock, NFL Primetime, they'll show you what has happened throughout the day. And we're really looking forward to going to San Francisco next Sunday night. Our guest analyst, the great Jim Brown, the Browns and the 49ers will be our game at 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Miami leads 13-7. They have the ball back of their own 20. 3-17 to go third period. Marino pressure from Jones through incomplete tying for Hampton, and the official could have reached out and got we were talking before about the future for the Dallas Cowboys being Steve Pallour. Talk to Gil Brandt, the player personnel director for the Cowboys. I said, who is the number one prospect in college football this year? He said, it's not Tim Brown. For his money, it's Troy Aikman, UCLA, the quarterback, who will be a senior next year. But he said that right now, it is Troy Aikman. He's got Elway-like tools. Watch for that name, Aikman. Putting some pressure on Mr. Aikman at this front. Second and ten from the corner. Davenport on underneath coverage gets it to the 29-yard line. Bill Bates brought him down along with Steve Diazzi, number 55. Billy Bates, interesting story. He's a sleepwalker who wrecks his room in his deep sleep, or did one time. One year he roomed with a guy named John Warren, who was a sleep talker. So picture this. There were nights when Warren would stand by the window screaming about goal line stands while Billy Bates trashed the furniture. Now that is an odd couple, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> That's how his wife feels about that. <laughs> Scare you when you wake up in the morning and the room's destroyed, wouldn't it? What a strange tandem that must have been. Third and inches. Bennett and Hampton, the running back. And Marino stumbled, coming out of the pocket, wanted to throw, and he sacked it. Jeff Rohr came from the outside, and it was not so much a matter of a Dallas pass rush. Marino couldn't keep his balance coming out from under center. Usually someone steps on a quarterback's foot like that. It's uh, be interesting to see what happened, whether he stumbled or whether the center stepped on his foot. It's the left, the right guard steps on his foot. Uh, yeah, there's no question that it uh, looks like Toth, number 76, right, stepped so, on him. Yep. Miami will have to punt it away with Roby, and Martin waits at his own 30. Right back to punt. Roby wow. almost put it up to the third deck. Martin at the 29. Got a block, Ooh. and got it back to the 39-yard line. A 10-yard return after a booming 49-yard punt from Reggie Roby. talking before about the sack it's interesting the Dallas Cowboys have given up more sacks on their quarterbacks in the last 15 games than Dan Marino has been sacked in his entire career can you believe that and it took uh, one of his own men stepping on him to get that one Pelour got a lot of time throw it off his back foot complete to Newsom. Newsom got about seven yards. Blackwood dragged him down at the 47-yard line. And Pelour starting to look just a little bit more comfortable with what he's doing back there. Yeah, Pelour made a nice throw, and Newsom, of course, made a good catch on that play. You know, one thing about Marino is, is not getting the sacks tonight, but obviously he's getting the hurries, and uh, Dallas has put pressure. He's hit, thrown off, but he's not getting enough time to, to really find that ideal receiver. He's having to throw the ball almost away at time for going to that, that, that short receiver. 1.15 to go. Third quarter, second and two, Dallas. Walker. Not this time. Herschel stacked up as he got to the line of scrimmage. T.J. Turner and John Offerdahl brought him down. One item I want to mention about the Herschel Walker-Tony Dorsett controversy. Both guys obviously want a lot of playing time. You would think that they'd be at each other's throat over playing time. Fact is, Walker and Dorsett may be the two closest friends on the team. That's not just window dressing. It's true. They, they go to movies a lot. They go to theater. They double date a lot. So there's not any animosity between Dorsett and Walker. It's just, we want to play, give me the football. Important to note that. Third down, two yards to go. Walker now with 81 carries, or 81 yards, and 17 carries. Well, Cindy is Herschel's wife, so that's 
Right. Yeah. Well, that, Tony I does say, date. When they, I say they go out together, it's couple. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah. And Tom Landry, none too happy as Dallas uses another timeout. That's yeah. two of their three here in the second half. And a close game, boy. That's just uh, that, that comes back to haunt you. That's a rookie mistake. Well, it's either a mistake in the huddle or it's a mistake in, on communicating from the sideline and getting the right people in for the uh, particular situation. Obviously, Pelour is not a rookie, but uh, this is the first, you know, any kind of real playing time he's had this year. And he had the tailspin last year at quarterback. The team lost five straight. So uh, maybe, uh, you know, he is a little rusty, a little tentative out there. Well, the last time it happened also, Roy, on third and one. This time it's third and two. So mm -hmm. there is probably a question on third and two are we going to run it or are we going to throw it on third and one obviously it's a run and they probably didn't have the right people in there and again in this case they just didn't have the right people in there and floor didn't want to take a chance on on uh, missing the first down save your Thanksgiving dessert because we've got a Thursday night game for you Texas Texas A&M live eight o'clock Eastern the Southwest Conference Championship is on the line and the winner will meet Notre Dame in the Cotton Bowl Jim Kelly and Kevin Kiley pass up turkey dinner at home and they'll bring you the game on Thursday night hope you join them it should be a good one always a war doomsday will rise again well there, there's a lot of talk down here in Dallas that the Cowboys are inches away from being a dominant defensive football team again the stats would certainly reflect it and they've done a good job tonight well there's been improvement there's no question about the uh, addition of Francis and Noonan and the play of Lockhart and walls and down so they've got uh, they've got some good ingredients on defense Third and two, Pelour in the shotgun. And Pelour, quarterback draw. Forget it. That's kind of ironic, isn't it? The time they set up a play for him, he uh, loses two yards. David looked, Fry, like the it. first man to him. Looked like he took off in a hurry, Rob. Yeah, I think, Mike, that, that was set up. It looked almost like a quarterback draw. Uh, I think that happened real fast. All right, what's the report card on Pelour so far in this football game, Roger? That was a draw the way he came back. The same uh, as before, he is a fine athlete, a lot of great movement, a little bit little experience. As long as he keeps mentally uh, confident, he does have the physical ability to be a productive quarterback. Saxon, a short punt, and the Dolphins fair catch it at the 21-yard line. 37-yard kick and no return. Being joined tonight on our ESPN telecast by the Goodyear Blimp America out of Houston, Texas, taking a look uh, through the hole in the roof at Texas Stadium. And I always wondered why they didn't go ahead. They're so close to having a totally domed stadium. Why didn't they do it? Well, I guess the uh, air conditioning and bills would have been <laughs> too expensive. I they wanted to have an outdoor appearance with a an indoor look. So. Whatever the reasons, uh, well, the they real, didn't do it. Isn't the real reason that Murchison, the former owner, said you have to have the natural conditions on the playing field for those football players, rain, snow, oh. et cetera? I think he said that one. Yeah. Well, John Meredith said it was so, so God could watch his favorite team play. <laughs> Hampton on the carry gets up to about the 23. Bates in on the stop along with Steve Diossi. And that is the end of the third period of play here in Big D. It's the Dolphins 13, the Cowboys 7. It's leading 13 to 7. This may be Shula's toughest year, but you have to admire this man. Don's wife, Dorothy, has been battling cancer for the last two and a half years. It's in remission, but David Shula was quoted as saying, I don't think I could ever match the battle my mother has been through. Dorothy said, there's no sense sitting around. You got to face it. I'm a fighter. I am not about to quit. This is a very courageous family. And we wish her the best. Marino on second and seven. Oh. Colts one sideline, and Duper couldn't find it. Now, Francis fell down also. That's, uh, Marino, du Marino never saw it, I don't think, Roger. He, he didn't see it, and Francis fell down. The ball, ball was probably overthrown, but again, the reason it was overthrown, Marino is a little bit off of his plan tonight. He's getting rid of that ball, knowing that he's getting pressure on him. He's not taking that extra split second. He got rid of that ball very quickly, and it's been the fact that he's been pretty, pretty uh, hassled all night. Interesting thing to remember that he's got a streak going now for touchdown passes, and it's in jeopardy right now. Thrown a touchdown in 29 games in a row, only Johnny Unitas ever did more than that. He threw for 47 straight. Marino, plenty of time, and that one hit Stratford right in the helmet. 
Robert Williams on the coverage, but that baby bounced right off of the Dolphins and sinking on the front of the helmet. I want to get back to the Don Shula story. The behind-the-scenes story, and I've, I've known Don since I'm 15 years old, literally I was a ball boy at the Dolphins camp, is the strength of the Shula family. His five children, Dorothy Shula, just an absolute terrific person and a real big support behind Don Shula, the woman behind the man. Roby airs another one out, Martin, 26. Takes it back to the 32-yard line. Seven-yard return after a 50-yard booming punt by Reggie Robe. Last uh, week in Broward County, they had a testimonial dinner for Dorothy Shula. And I'll tell you, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. A very, very emotional moment. And Don, not one to show his feelings emotionally, overtly, in terms of the matters of the heart. But he was uh, broken up over it, obviously. So was David Shula. He's going to stay in this game as a head coach for as long as Shula without a good perspective on, on life as well. He's got a tremendous faith and a permanence to his life as well as the temporal life. So his pers perspective is solid. He's a fierce competitor, and he's uh, been a great family man. Dallas down by six. Herschel Walker and caught in the backfield and dropped by John Boza, the rookie out of Boston College. I think the killer bees are back. These guys are uh, <laughs> playing. I'd, I'd like to have been in some of those meetings this week. <laughs> after, after what Dickerson did last week in Indianapolis, the uh, Dolphins are really uh, moving on defense and doing a great job. A after the first few minutes of this game, we thought we had a high-scoring affair. Yeah. It's fourth quarter, 14 minutes ago, and 13 to 7 Dolphins. Walker lost two, so he has 79 yards net rushing. Pelour play fake. Good ball handler gets it out to Walker. Juggled it, got it back, took it out of bounds at the 35-yard line. One thing people forget is that Herschel Walker was a fifth-round draft choice of the Miami Dolphins, they, or of the Dallas Cowboys. They took a gamble that the USFL would fail, and I often wondered why somebody didn't take a chance at drafting him higher. Talk about conditioning for this guy. He's never lifted a weight in his life, and Roger, if you've ever seen his body, you know that's unbelievable. But he does do 2,000 sit-ups every night. And push-ups. And push-ups. What a man. Unbelievable. Third and seven. Pelour with Walker, couldn't hold it. May have been tipped by Don McNeil, the seven-year veteran out of Alabama. This, this has not been a great night for Herschel in terms of holding on to the football. Well, the, the Don McNeil did a great job here. I think number 28 knocked the ball. Watch 28, Don McNeil, who com comes in in these passing situations. Right here, he at least got his, he might not have tipped the ball, but he got his hand in the way, and he did tip the ball, just yeah. barely. And, of course, Walker's a good receiver, and that, that tip uh, knocked the ball away. It's the first incompletion of the second half, and Saxon really creamed this one. Schwady's trying to get something out of the return, only gets it back to the 17-yard line. 51-yard kick from Mike Saxon. And that's inside the Goodyear blimp. We have 13-37 to go in the ball game. It's a six-point Dolphin lead. Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Bud Light, everything else is just the light. Crowd is starting to chant for the Dolphin defense as Miami starts at its own 17. 13 37 to go. The Dallas defense has done a fine job. They haven't gotten much help from their offense tonight. Marino rifles one to Tony Nathan, who makes the grab and goes up over the 31-yard line. Steve Biasi on the stop. That's just not another play, either. That, the crowd was getting into it. I, Biasi's in yep. there for Lockhart. He kind of had the defense revved up, and Marino comes right out and quiets things down a little bit, gets him out of uh, some difficult field position with a quick hitter there. Lockhart had had a bad tie during the week. Kevin Brooks is back in there. Brooks has a hip pointer. Marino dumps it off to Davenport, and Davenport cut down as he reached the 44-yard line. 
Diasi back there along with Michael Downs. The strategy for Marino clearly now throwing underneath to beat the coverage. Throw to your backs. Be patient if you have to. Dallas is keeping that run defense in there on first down. Marino's taking advantage of the linebackers, really throwing off the linebackers, getting them isolated and hitting the, uh, the backs out of the backfield. It's another first down. Dolphins. The latest Stratford, who's already over 100 yards and dragging tacklers with him to the 49-yard line. Now, who would have thought? We come into a game with Troy Stratford and Herschel Walker, and Stratford is up around 110 yards, and Herschel Walker's shy of 80. Well, Stratford has got that quickness, though. He's, re he's really getting into the hole very, very fast. Dallas is uh, doing a good job at the line of scrimmage, but that quickness is getting him slithering through there, and he's doing a good job getting that extra yard. Spotted just shy of midfield, second and five. Davenport. Bill Bates came up hard from his safety spot and got in on the stop along with Kevin Brooks. Landry really likes Bates. He says he's the kind of guy you need on the field, and he will get better every year. One thing they did to improve Bates' coverage on pass coverage was to let him work against wide receivers in practice. He found the tight ends were a little easier after that. He is all heart, Billy Bates is. That's John Madden's favorite player, by the way. Bates gives you 120%, and you're right, Mike. He's really worked on his pass coverage this year, and he's done a good job with his tight ends. Ball in Miami territory, 32. Stratford. And Bill Bates hit him, but Stratford dove forward and got the first down. Think Five, about, nine, and tough. Think about this. Here's the same guy who can change directions on a dime and has the same kind of talent to power his way ahead. Look at this hit he takes here. Good hit by Bates. And he's still going forward, too. Look at that. And that extra effort. Great versatility. Got him the first down at the Dallas 45. 10 minutes, 33 seconds and counting in this game. Dolphins up by six. Too tall almost got there. Marino for Clayton. And it's Clayton took it away Unbelievable. from Francis. Holy cow. Unbelievable. I thought, uh, I, of course, everybody thought, <laughs> you know, I, I, Francis had the ball. It's a he great had interception. It. in perfect position and Clayton took it away. This is a situation where Clayton shows that leaping ability. He said it before, a 36-inch vertical leap. He stays right there with it and just takes the ball away. Uh, that, well, he did it on the ground. Well, oh, he took it away on the ground. But it looked like uh, Francis was bobbling the ball on the ground. He really didn't have possession and it kind of bobbled back up into his hands right there. See that bobble right, right up there? Yep. It was, and, uh, maybe it was a fumble, really. It might have really been a fumble. He well, bobbled it the never, ball. It never hit the ground, so whoever ends yeah. up with it is possession. I was watching the replay and making a judgment here. I'd say that uh, Clayton has possession right here. See, it kind of kicked back up in his hands right there, and they got the ball. Well, now, that is a tough call to make. It is up in the replay booth with Norm Schachter. Of course, I've only played for Dallas for 11 years and I'm a Cowboy fan, but watching this replay, it's just an unfortunate uh, kickback right into Clayton. I don't think uh, Francis had possession of the ball, so you can't give the ball to Francis. Now, the booing is because the crowd is seeing these replays, right. too. Yeah, but see, right here, watch it bounce off his thigh. Yeah. Right there is where he, uh, he got the ball. and That's Clayton's football, don't you think? I, I, he didn't rest the... it away. He did not take the ball away. It, it, it deflected into his eye. Right. It hit off that thigh and bounced and... Uh, and the ball's not dead because it never hit the ground. I mean, I, these guys are watching the replay here, and based on what uh, is being seen, that looks like uh, that's Clayton's football. Clayton's football. An extremely important play in this football. Oh, yeah. But they get a first down here. <laughs> they get a first down here. I'd say it's a... That's it. it maybe. It is a real... One of these guys is going to be very happy. The other one is going to be very upset. Well, the Cowboys are pointing the other way, but they don't have a monitor on the field. And, you know, there has been some criticism of the replay officials for taking such a long time. Right. My thought is, if you're going to call it and use the replay technology, take as much take time, time as you need and get it right. Well, there's three of us here, and there's... Uh... 
Well, can we have the national audience call in right now? Is there a button that we can... <laughs> you call toll-free, ladies and gentlemen. It's got to be an 800 I, or 900 number. I, I say that... Uh, Clayton, uh, what's this? I think it's got to be Clayton's football. It never hit the ground. Francis never had possession of it, and Clayton came out with it. He never had possession of it, Francis. So, worst case, this could be an incomplete pass. Good a blocker as Woody Bennett, but a better runner. Although this year he's only carried it eight times all season. Stay on the ground all the way here, Roger. I'd throw the ball right here. Dallas is tough in that goal line defense on the two-yard line. I'd, uh, I'd go for it. I'd throw the ball. Stradford in motion. Marino throws incomplete. Knocked away at the goal line intended for Hardy. And right there with him, Bill Bates, and it also looked like Ron Burton. Well, Marino saw the little gap that was open there, and Hardy should have caught this ball. It drilled him right in the chest. Boy, is he having a tough time tonight. Boom. This is about his second or, no, it's about his third or fourth drop tonight. Yeah. It's, here's the reaction from the coach. I don't think Walls really hit him very hard from the back. He just uh, dropped that football. Surprised it didn't stick to him. dropped a few footballs last week and he's made up for it. They, they love his athletic ability. Caught a bullet this time. Yeah, he showed it right there. Marino just spun. He was going to get hammered and nothing bothers Marino back there. He's a, he's a, you know, of course he's a tremendous quarterback. Nothing bothers him. He drilled that ball, but it was a hard thrown pass right here and Pruitt, who's taken his lumps last week, even oh, yeah. though they love his athletic ability, made a nice catch right there. He dropped a 50-yard wide open flea flicker a, a week ago. He dropped one the week before that. In fact, he dropped three in all, but he didn't drop it that time. Reves on for the point after. He's true, and the Dolphins in unfriendly territory have taken a 20 to seven lead over the Dallas Cowboys. Back in a moment. in 30 straight games. Only Johnny Unitas ever did more than that. Unitas had an incredible streak of 47 games in a row. The question at quarterback for Dallas is what do you do with a quarterback situation, Roger? You need two touchdowns, and Pelour does not look like the guy who's going to bring you back with two scores. Well, that, that is a tough decision. You're, you're playing with a guy that you think is your future also and his confidence level and to uh, keep him into a tight situation. White has been hurt. They want to rest him. They possibly want him to play on Thanksgiving Day. So it's a two-game program mm -hmm. right now with the future of a... In, in the second half, Steve has played... He's played good football. Yes, he's he throwing. He's, but again, it's <laughs> there's only seven points on the board, and you judge... You know, an offense by the number of points and not how you look. Danny White has been a very courageous quarterback here in Dallas. He has a severe wrist injury, broke it a year ago. And it's Daryl Clack for the Cowboys. They need a big return. And they're not going to get it. Clack out to the 24-yard line. During the commercial, we caught Ernie Stotner, the Cowboys veteran defensive coach, just going crazy on the sideline. It had to do with the call, no doubt. The referee's decision on the Clayton play? It, it, it could, yes. And uh, he's, he is talking to the uh, someone up in the upstairs up there, either Dick Nolan or someone else. So he could have been upset with the coverage on that last pass, but it seems like they're still upset with a call on the sidelines. 
Cowboys need two touchdowns, and they only have eight and a half minutes to get it. Pelour remains in at quarterback. They go with a quick screen out to Walker. Blocker in front of him. Walker still on his feet. What a move. Got away from Brown. 35-yard line. Well, there's the answer. You get it to Herschel Walker. You forget everything else. 45-yard gain. Get a chance to see some of this Olympic speed. Next to Bo Jackson, this is perhaps the second fastest guy in the NFL. He's Walker. beaten Carl Lewis before in sprint races. Look at the speed right here. Now Walker can uh, obviously run, run once he catches the ball. He is an excellent receiver. You just need to get him some open air. Tonight, they've bottled him up in the middle running the football, but if he gets outside or catches a pass with some daylight, he can really move that football. Excellent block from Mark Tuane on that screen. Newsom, not this time. Brian Soche, the nose tackle, and John Foza, the right defensive end, combined to bring him down. It's a real, obviously, uh, it's an important drive for Dallas, but they really need a touchdown. You know, a field goal would take a little of the wind out of the sails after a big run like Walker, and that would still put them, you know, a long ways away from the 20 points. So a touchdown here, and then you're picturing another touchdown in the 21-20 game. So they need to score, and they need to get in the end zone and not kick a field goal in this drive. Second and nine, they gave Newsom a gain of one on the last four. The Lord and Newsom took a shot from Mark Brown, the five-year linebacker out of Purdue, is having such a great year, the number two tackler on this club. There are a lot of people who believe that Mark Brown, even though he's playing on a, a pretty bad defensive unit, deserves to be all pro. See a play he was right here on uh, Newsom. Big hit there for Brown. Newsom would vote for him. <laughs> Third and seven. With seven minutes and nine seconds to go, the Cowboys need this one badly. What do you call here, Rod? Half, eight out of nine. Uh, you got to throw the ball, and uh, Cosby or over the middle or somewhere hiding in that zone. The Lord looks near side, throws to Cosby. Dives near the 20 yard line. Depending on the mark, it's with inches of a first down one way or another. And Graff and Cosby into it a little bit. Let's see where they spot it. And they say first down, no measurement, nothing. Doug Cosby had trouble getting the ball last year. He's getting it a lot more this good, year, good particularly job. clutch reception. Watch Walker clear to the corner there, and he. And nobody to the inside. He made this turn to the inside and poor drilling. Mike Smith made the stop, but not before they got the first one. Walker. Mm. And gang tackled once again by the Dolphins. Picked up maybe a yard. The Cowboys have to keep an eye on the clock. It's down to 5.54. And remember, they used two timeouts yep. already right. on third and short situations when Pelour couldn't figure out what was going on or the play or the players didn't get in in time. We're not sure which. But they've only got one timeout left, and they need two touchdowns. Now they're going to go to Walker this time. You were right about Cosby, Rod. See if you're right again. The Lord floats it for the end zone. Newsom, touchdown! beat Bob Brzezinski and Pelour laid it on the money. Yeah, it looks like Brzezinski just didn't see the ball. He kind of just turned a little bit late, but a perfect throw. I know, it looked like even at the end, he wasn't sure the ball was thrown out there. But there was a play action to Walker and a good throw by Pelour. Roger Rozek on for the point after. It's 
20 to 14. Newsom, the leading receiver a week ago, is added again. Seven catches, two of them for touchdown. Thanks, Steve Pelour had only been in one play the entire NFL season. He was knocked out on that play against the Philadelphia Eagles. But so far, late in the game, he's been a knockout. It's 20 to 14. He's brought the Cowboys back, and now it's Marino's turn. That was a big drive for Steve Pelour. He he showed a lot of ability last season when he played, and he had some difficulty at the end of the year. But he came through in that drive. The Cowboys were lined up in an onside kick formation. Now they'll kick it away. And it's Scott Schwedes, a yard deep in the end zone. Taken down at the 13-yard line. Downs and Clack were the guys that got him. And now the pressure shifts to Miami with 5.09 to go in the game. They need to work on the clock. This is obviously the crucial series. The Dolphins want to keep the ball, hold on to it, get a couple of first downs. I imagine, Roger, high percentage passes, nothing deep downfield. Keep the ball, eat it up. I'd be real surprised if he ran the ball here. Dallas's defense is really fired up. He quieted him down by hitting a, a pass. With the game on the line, Stratford and Davenport in the backfield. Stratford. Oh, he got a couple of great blocks and a tremendous move outside to the 20-yard line. That's what I said. They ought to run the ball in first down. Then. <laughs> <laughs> he does a lot of this himself. He got a pretty good uh, block from the tackle outside. But look at the juke and look at the moves. Troy Stratford. Got to be very impressed with this young man. Reminds me of Merck here. Look at this. Yeah, he's really, he's had a fine night. He, he, He's just got that quickness and that ability to, to make the move at the right time. He's been doing it all night, whether catching the football or running out of the backfield. 13 carries, 118 yards, not second and one. Stratford goes for the first down. And it looks like he has it out at the 24. And the clock rolling. Remember, Dallas only has one timeout. They used the other two on third and short situations yep. earlier in the ball game, well, and that could be a big factor. That's coming. That may come back to kill them. But the timeouts won't matter unless they can stop Miami. Four and a half minutes left. Dolphins up by six. Be lucky to get this baby off. Gotta call timeout, and Marino has to use one. Last week, the Dolphins had two delay of game penalties because they couldn't get the signals from the press box down to the field. Well, it got down to two seconds before Marino had to call timeout. Obviously, there was some kind of confusion. If Miami could run four plays and get a first down, they would take us down to about the two-minute warning. Talk about relationships there. There's Don Strock over there. He's been a real mentor for Marino. Strock is... He's played very well when he's had to play, but he's been pretty much of a consummate backup guy, a team team guy, and almost like a player coach oh, right yeah. now. Marino respects him a great deal. Marino calls him his guru, his quarterback guru. He's a cool customer, though. I, you know, normally in this type of situation with the fans and the hoopla, you know, you start worrying too much about protecting the lead but Mar Marino's an aggressive quarterback he's going to go after him and he's going that's the way he plays the game and he just doesn't seem to uh, to worry about any particular situation he plays the same all the time and that's a uh, pretty aggressive throwing first down and mix it up when he has to first and ten sports center follows this ball game Gail Gardner and John Saunders everything in the day in sports Bradford. Cowboys playing run still can't stop him at the, uh -oh. the scrimmage with the ball. And one official pointing at the ground saying it was down and yeah. it is. Mr. Shula's heart skipped a beat there. What do you think Stradford's did? <laughs> Let's see. 
again he gets that little crease puts his head down he's got both hands on the ball right about here. I don't know oh that's, that's loose right that ball is, is loose that was a fumble that ball was swatted out of his hands that other angle that right knee and they're not stopping it for the instant replay yes they are Miami came up to the line of scrimmage and they will review it upstairs of course we didn't see who fell on the ball either watch that right knee though left knee see that left knee right there yeah maybe you're right it's close oh that was a really close play well I think I stand corrected again mm. That's the value of that replay and the different angles, and the officials have to call it as it goes. They're saying down on contact. That is a new rule this week. If the whistle blows, that kills the play, and the player is ruled down on contact, and that's it. Marino keeps pointing to the scoreboard. I guess he's telling him to start the clock. And that's the clock should doing. start again. Yeah. That's what he's doing. He's telling, hey, start the clock. And Cherry Mark Bright is saying, look, I'll handle this. You go call the play, I'll start the clock. He gets a fresh 25. 30. 30, I mean. Thinking basketball. 20, 24 seconds, right? And Marino will use every one of those seconds on that clock. Second and three. Hampton. Oh. oh. Brooks in a hurry. Look at the line play right here. Kevin Brooks. Brooks is really not touched. All the uh, running. Four, Davenport supposed to cut him. Missed him totally. This will make it third and three, but the clock continues to run. It's down to 253. Say this is a significant play right here. Biggest one we've had yet. This is it. I'll go for that short one. Little pop right there. Marino to Stradford first down at the 36-yard line. Didn't look like much, but boy, he's a master. Just coolly throw it right in there. Thread it inside, get the first down, keep that clock rolling. 227. When you're a receiver and you know you've got a Marino throwing you the ball. As soon as you turn, you really have to be ready for the ball. <laughs> Stratford knew what he had to do to get the first down. He only needed four yards. And as soon as he spun around, that ball was right there. And the Cowboys have spent their last time out. Otherwise, Miami would have been able to take it down all the way to the two-minute warning. But Dallas is now out of timeouts. And the Dolphins can wrap it up with one more first down. Just shows you the value of those those timeouts that Palour called. Now we don't know that it was necessarily Palour's call to call the timeout, but it sure appeared that way. Tex Ram in the booth. He can't be very very happy with the, the way things have gone. Been criticized by a number of people for alienated his players. Players threatened uh, with the uh, withholding of the annuities for us uh, honoring the strike. The alienation of teammates. Danny White versus Everson Walls. Jeff Rohr. Doug Cosby. And the Cowboy players saying, hey, they don't respect us around the league anymore because we all went back in to break this, the picket lines. Everson Walls, representing that, said, hey, they once hated us out of respect. Now the players around the league hate us out of disrespect. Tex Schramm, of course, the architect of the replacement games. A lot of people find hypocrisy in Tex Schramm, saying that, uh, well, he belittled the USFL, calling it inferior football. What do you call the replacement games? Yeah, that's still the job of a player. When they get on that field, their job is to win and to play football and to forget about the excuses. And you got to put the team ahead of your own personal feelings or your own personal problems. First and 10 Miami. Stradford. He's been a terrific runner tonight, and Bates brings him down at the 37-yard line. This will take it down to two minutes. Remember, the Cowboys have no timeouts left. And Miami will be in no hurry. Two minutes to go from Dallas, Texas. The Dolphins 20, the Cowboys 14. Blimp America over Dallas, Texas. And Texas Stadium. And we have two minutes left in this ball game. Dolphins by six. There's Texas A. Shrimp. 
I'll tell you something, this is a powerful man, maybe the most powerful man next to Roselle in all of pro football. How tough is he? True story. Once he went on a, a swimming trip, I guess, with Pete Roselle, a close friend of his. There was a shark in shallow water. Roselle said, look out, here's a shark. He took a piece of wood and knocked the shark out with that piece of wood. This is a tough man. He was tough on the players, too. Hey, after agents, how tough can sharks be? <laughs> right. Some say agents are sharks. Marino, a little trouble on the handoff, and they'll get it up to about the 41-yard line. The tackle made by Gene Lockhart. As Tony Nathan came in, balls at the 42. It is third and four. And if Miami gets the first down, you can back up the bus because it's over. Dallas with no timeouts. Pelour on the phone to the coaches upstairs, hoping to get a chance to get the ball back. Well, Dallas has their uh, passing defense, and they brought in a lot of extra backs. You might see a run a sweep this time. Stratford, he needs four, and he's got it. Stratford staying in bounds to the 40, 35, 30. Look at him go! Feet. What an effort! Troy Stratford all the way to the 20-yard line, carrying Ron Francis and the other tacklers with him. A 41-yard gain for Troy Stratford, who has 173 on the night. Well, Dallas, oh. Dallas brought in all those backs, and of course, uh, you know, you get get some pretty smart people on the sidelines. It's, it's a guessing game. They decided to run against that and uh, carrying two guys. Look at this. What an effort. Look at Shula's reaction to this. Come on, Troy. Let's go. Go, go, go. <laughs> you know, the uh, success of these men, they're playing, they're coaching against each other, too. Shula and, and Landry, they're going at it. Uh, and now all Marino has to do is kneel down. He was using up as much time as he could. And without a timeout, they don't have to snap the ball again. This telecast was presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. And Don Shula's team goes to 5-5. Five and five. They are tied for first in the AFC East. And he gets a smile and a handshake from Tom Landry. The Cowboys also fall to five and five, but they are in a lot of problems with trying to get a wild card berth in the playoffs. They've got a game coming up with Minnesota that's going to be very, very important to them. Our final score, the Miami Dolphins 20, the Dallas Cowboys 14. For Roy Firestone and Roger Staubach, this is Mike Patrick saying so long from Texas Stadium. Now let's join the ESPN Sports Center.